Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to The Crucible. I'm your host, Andrew Wilson. Today we have a special event, a little early afternoon for us, against Vosh versus Brandon Martinez. You can find Vosh, kind of the ongoing joke, right? Vosh from Vosh. That's, uh, that's his channel. I will put a link so that you can get to Vosh from his channel, Vosh, right down in the description. We'll also be putting uh, Brandon's links down, of course. We always do this. If you want to route your chat, then YouTube, you can go to comfy.stream. You can make an account there and you can watch this broadcast live in high definition from Comfy. If you choose to do it that way, you're more than welcome to. Tonight's debate on Good demographic entry. shifts in the West. Um, we're going to start, we're going to let Brandon open. He's asked for seven minutes. Vosh has graciously agreed to give it to him. Vosh can either yield his, uh, his own seven-minute opening after that, or they can move right into cross-examination. fine with me. We expect the debate to go on for roughly hour, 45 minutes or so before Super Chats come in. Uh, we will be taking some select callers, but make sure that you get into the Discord if you want to do that. Uh, all callers have to be vetted, obviously. Go ahead, Brandon, with your opening. All right, so... Um... I guess I'll start with a quote. Uh, the Dalai Lama a few years ago said that Europe belongs to Europeans. And I agree with him. He said that refugees should go back to their homelands and build and develop their own lands. Um, another guy called Imran Khan, president of Pakistan, said to change the demography of a place is a war crime. And he said that in reference to Kashmir. So he was basically saying that the Indians bringing people into Kashmir is a crime because it's changing the demographics. Now, what's interesting is that if a white person were to say that, or a white European leader, they would be called a racist or a white supremacist, of course. But he's brown, so he can say that. Um, so we're debating uh, demographics and demographic shifts. So I guess I'll, I'll just summarize a little bit. This started in the 1960s civil rights revolution. I think this is where it goes back to. Uh, it's like this post-World War II consensus uh, driven by Jewish intellectuals, uh, principally the Frankfurt School. You got Adorno, Horkheimer, Marcuse. You also have the Franz Boas School of Anthropology. And their goal was essentially to discredit the idea of race and racial differences. And the purpose of that was to undermine nationalism. If nationalism is nation equals race, then this, uh, for, from their perspective, this could lead to Hitler 2.0, right? Third Reich 2.0. And to scuttle that, what better way to do that than to convince everybody that race is not important or it's not real. And this is essentially what they've done. Um, it's not the only factor. I don't think that's like the number, well, it's the number one factor, but it's not the only factor. I think there's leftists who agree with them. There's other groups that agree with them that support the same things. Uh, Barbara Spector, she's a pro-immigration activist. She says, Europe has not yet learned to be multicultural. I think we're going to be part of the throes of that transformation, which must take, take place. Europe's not going to be the monolithic societies they were once in the last century. Jews are going to be at the center of that. It's a huge transformation for Europe to make. They're going into a multicultural mode, and Jews will be resented for their leading role. Uh, Jonathan Wiseman He's the editor of the New York Times. He's Jewish. He said, Jews in America have done the things by welcoming outsiders that they're, they're being accused of doing by white nationalists. So it would stand to reason that anti-Semitism would flare up whenever nationalism is on the rise. He says, it's my view that when borders are blurred, distinctions are diminished, Jews tend to flourish. But when the drawbridge is raised, when borders are clearly defined, when people are defining sharply what it means to be American, French, and British, those are bad times for Jews because nationalism rises. The Jews tend to be isolated and persecuted. So that's pretty much the motivation of a lot of these people to promote this kind of replacement immigration. So let me give you a few statistics here. Um, the last U.S. census shows that the white population is only 60% in the U.S., down from 90% in the 50s. The white alone population fell by 8.6% since 2010. Hispanics and Latinos grew by 23%. Asians grew by 35%. Blacks by 5.6%. Six U.S. states have fallen below 50% white, and seven states are below 60% white. The fertility rates of white women were down in every U.S. state in 2017, according to the CDC. 
However, among Black and Hispanic women, fertility rates were up in 12 and 29 states. A study of birth and death rates between 1999 and 2016 by demographers found that in 26 American states, whites are dying faster than they're being born, and that the population increases in the U.S. are driven entirely by Latinos. A Brookings report on demographics said that the declining white population share is pervasive across the nation. Since 2010, the white population share declined in all 50 states and in 358 of the nation's 364 metropolitan areas. A Pew study in demographics says from 2000 to 2018, 109 counties in 22 states went from majority white to majority non-white. A Brookings report says the new census projections confirm the importance of racial minorities as the primary demographic engine of the nation's future growth, countering the declining white population. New statistics project the nation will be minority white in 2045. Whites are already a minority uh, in the under age 15 population. Canada, at least four major cities in Ontario are, are majority non-white and five major cities in BC. According to a demographer, Eric Kaufman, Canada is experiencing the fastest rate of ethnic change of any country in the Western world. Almost seven of 10 Metro Vancouver residents will be visible minorities in less than two decades. Canada as a whole, based on current trends, will be almost 80% non-white in less than a century. Statistics Canada projected about one third of Canada's population will be visible by minority by 2031. And the country's foreign born population is expected to rise as much as 28%, four times faster than the rest of the population. The majority of them are South Asians. Statistics Canada uh, says that by 2036, as many as 30% of all residents will not have been born in Canada. Another 20% will be native born with one immigrant parent. The vast majority are from Asian nations. Within 20 years, Canada will likely be as brown as it is white. The UK, a demographer, David Coleman, says white Britons will be a minority by 2066. and London, they already are a minority. Germany, nearly one in four German citizens come from an immigration background. The EU, Rotterdam, 51% have migration background, Malmo, 54%, Antwerp, 67%, Hamburg, 34%, Amsterdam, 54%, Vienna, 54%. Now, I will say, though, that the, um, the EU statistics include white uh, immigrants, so from other European countries, so I would say that it doesn't reflect entirely the situation. I don't think it's as bad as America. America, is the, America and Canada are the two countries that are destined to be mi minority white by mid-century. Um, how much time do I have left? Uh, you have two minutes. Okay, so I guess the big question is, why is it happening? What's the cause of it? Well, you don't really have to go far to, to find out. Um, politicians admit what they're doing. They say what they're doing. It's not a, it's not a secret. It's not a conspiracy, really. Uh, Joe Biden a few years ago said that there's an unrelenting stream of immigration. It's not going to stop, nor should we want it to stop. As a matter of fact, it's what we can be most proud of. He says that uh, people of European descent will soon be a minority. That's not a bad thing. That's a source of our strength. Trudeau in Canada said that Canada is a new kind of country. It's not defined by our history of European national origins, by a pan-cultural heritage. There's no core identity, no mainstream in Canada. It's a post-national state. Um, in the EU, Franz Timmerman, he says diversity is seen as a threat in some parts of Europe. It comes with challenges, but diversity is our destiny. There's not going to be, even the remotest places of the world, a nation that will not see diversity in the future. 30, 30 seconds, Brandon. Peter Sutherland, he's the head of the UN Migration Office. He said it at a... Um, a meeting that the EU should do its best to undermine the national homogeneity of its member states and said that the future prosperity of EU states depends on them becoming multicultural. And that's a very small sample of leading politicians, elites, saying what they are doing, that they're actively trying to undermine our racial homogeneity in the West. Appreciate that opening, Brandon. Uh, Vosh, we're going to turn it over to you. We'll give you the exact amount of time to respond to that opening before we move right into cross-examination, or you can yield your time, whichever one you'd like to do. Yeah, we'll see how much I end up needing. Um, yeah, I guess all the work of the Frankfurt School was for naught. 
It's hard to deny racial differences when we see here the Caucasoid propensity for whinging. You have to make an argument. So you say there are more minorities in America. Fine. And? They like immigration. Yes? And? Bring me the Dalai Lama. I will call him racist to his face. I'll fight him. He's old and weak. And? What are the arguments here? Yes. Obviously. Uh, there are more non-white people here in the States than there were before. Of course. Yes, they like multiculturalism and diversity. Seems to be generally a good thing. It's economically good. Immigration has proven quite good for our people in economic terms. Uh, culturally, uh, many of America's richest cultural exports are a product of our multicultural origins. From our food to our music, so much of what it means to be an American today and what it means to see Americans from abroad, it is courtesy of immigrants. They are Americans as they come here and as they are born here. I really do not care what the skin tone of the people who live here is, or what their ethnicity or whatever uh, ends up being. If you go want to look at the, the fruits of your monoracial societies, then you could look around the world and I ask you, find me a stable society anywhere without interior ethnic conflict. You cannot. Usually, the idea is that there's some kind of like um, mono-ethnic state out there that can be contrasted against the uh, crime-riddled United States. You know, only the strongest country to have ever existed in the history of the world. You know, I speak only from the position of humbly, you know, being on top of the world, you know. But let's see what other countries are doing. Where can you find them? Every other country is riddled with ethnic conflict because ethnic conflicts are an inevitable product of having a country with more than one person in it. Ethnicities are infinitely divisible. If you look towards monoracial cultures, what, Japan, with their ailing economy and failing interior civic system, so beloved are their leaders that when Shinzo Abe was assassinated, the people of Japan basically shrugged and said, eh, okay. And he was quite racist himself. Bring me Shinzo Abe's corpse. I will call it racist. I just don't understand. You, to you... The black person is scary. The Jew is scary. So you say they exist in our country and you imagine that's the argument. But I do not find them scary. Why should I be afraid? Why should I care? That's all the time I need. Okay, thank you for that opening. Before we open up the floor, I just want to remind you, if you have questions at the end of the debate for both of the debaters after we close the debate down, send in a super chat. We will get to all of the super chats. We appreciate both of the debaters coming in. The floor is open, gentlemen. Well, you're not in, you're not denying that white people are going to become a minority, right? Of course. What kind of idiot would deny this? It's obvious given the demographic. So trends. why would white people want to become a minority? See, that's the problem here in a nation that, well, let's just take America where politicians are now talking about redistributing wealth based on racial lines, you know, uh, reparations payments. They're trying to do um, all kinds of What are they doing exactly? For, for well, uh, for example, recently Kamala Harris recently said about the uh, disaster aid to Florida that we're going to give that to uh, communities of color, underprivileged people, uh, stuff like that. Yes, they um, mean Joe, Joe Biden. It's the nature of the Joe, Democrat. Yeah. Okay. But why would white people want a society in which they are a minority? And if being a minority means that you are vulnerable, which is, seems to be the Jewish argument, right? The quotes I gave you there, they think that being a minority means that they're in danger, right? I hate to and, cut in here, so I'm really sorry to do this, but Brandon, I do need you to turn your mic down just a little bit. You're actually drowning out. Um, go ahead, talk a little bit. about now? Okay, we'll One, try two, that. Three. Go ahead. Howdy. Okay. Yeah, so, well, white people becoming a minority is bad for white people, obviously, because our standing is diminished. They can wait, persecute hold on, us. hold on. They, they wait, can wait, 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 before we get to the whinging, I exist in this world. I want to talk about this world, actual harm. So, so far, despite literal centuries of whinging, uh, the well-being of white people has not yet been diminished for the prominence and political power of minority groups. They've been talking about it for ages. I mean, the, um, the, uh, what's that film? Uh, the one the racists like, the Klan, um... Uh, help me here. My memory's not great. Birth of a nation. Birth of a nation, they say, you know. The Klan will ride in, fix all America's problems after black people get to Congress or what have you. You know, the white grievance has lasted, uh, you know, 
uh, longer than my lifespan or yours, uh, or that of our fathers or grandfathers, and yet nothing has happened. You know, you say in this abstract, you say the Jews claim that the minority is victimized. Why do you ascribe this belief to the Jews when you're the one fearmongering over it? Do you agree with them that the minority is mistreated, or do you only agree with them when we refer I, to I the whites? I agree with them that a minority is vulnerable to be mistreated. Absolutely, their their political power is diminished because they don't have voting power. They can't vote as a block. Uh, they, I mean, they can try, but they're not going to win a democratic election by voting as a block. And this is what uh, Democrat many Democrats say that um, de don't demographics vote as a block. is. Then demographics is destiny, and that the more brown people in the country Demo will help. Wait, Democrats, whenever I whenever I hear that, we'll, it is not the Democrats saying it. Democrats it are is, not the ones who say that the demographics are destiny. It's usually people like you. Um, it, if, actually, if demographics are destiny, a, I, I have a Democrat saying that. Well, I'm sure there are Democrats saying it. When I hear it, it's usually coming from folks like you. If there's any extent to it's which true. demographics are destiny, it's because Republicans are so racist they have trouble. Um, you know, pulling votes from uh, racial groups that would otherwise be socially in agreement with them on quite a few issues, which is usually pretty funny. So, so we're, we're, we're entering a phase where politics is totally racialized and Democrats As opposed are, to the past? are voting, are Wait, voting based we're on entering race. That phase? Can I, can I, can we do two minutes uh, here? He's just going to interrupt me every two no, seconds. So, so the thing we ain't is, doing, is like, we ain't doing two minutes. No, I just want to we'll, talk. We'll, yeah, you, yeah. You, you don't want to do two minutes because you just want to interrupt me. Well, no, the thing I is, is talk. That it's going to be, it's going to be a contentious debate. I understand that if it gets to the point of absurdity, I'll cut in, but it hasn't gotten there yet. Yeah, so well, we're so entering a, a period of racialized politics. Like now, like that's happening now, as opposed to the past, which was deracialized. Well, Just we're, a silly we're entering premise. a period of anti-white racialized politics, where mm. where these people are hell bent on making whites a, minor, a minority because they know that they can then abuse whites. They know that they can take advantage of whites. Winching that they can do the redistribution. We, what do you what do you make of all of these uh, big companies saying they're going to be hiring more black people? You know, twenty percent more black people this year. And my suggestion be, is that you find a real social problem we're to cry about. Elevating black people to CEO positions simply because no, they're listen black. To you, listen to you. Listen to you. This is the this is the winching. This is the weakness. We have affirmative you action are already in universities in every discriminating against white people. Demographic capacity in terms of economic and social attainment. White people are doing quite well here. And you hear a company go, we'll be hiring 2% extra people of color in our positions it's not of management. It's and you shit yourself. 20%. Listen, Boeing said 20%. Big we guy. are not, if you have a problem with the behavior of private companies in a free market, then you are fully aware of the God given American way that you can deal with that, which is not buying their products. If you want to talk about what your actual position is, the Nazi shit, the white ethno state, the what have you, you need to give me an argument for why I, a white man, should give a shit about non-white people entering the country. Because I don't care if they go ahead and hire some black CEOs or whatever, considering the fact that for the most you, part, black people are disadvantaged happen. in this attainment. You, you, you want non-whites to rule you want white people to be diminished you can want you white get people one to point in that ain't just you complaining of in a position in the fetal position so that non-whites can dominate us is this a kink thing are you every point you have is this just is exactly we're what, weak this is we're being hurt you. so this i ask you again how is it hurting? Mr. Do you have Mr. an economic trans rights, Mr. Ooh, trans people are are victimized. We need to help. This them. What are we not trans about, This debate is not uh, about transgender people. That's one. But I think so it's what? about I'm his kids. He's making a point here. He, yeah. he thinks that he thinks that he's an he's an advocate of trans people and trans rights, and we have to help these people. But then when someone says white people are oppressed, white people are being uh, demonized, they're not oppressed in many cases, being victimized in many cases being attacked in the streets for being white. I mean, they, they, after the BLM rights, that was common. <laughs> yes, and white why people do you, historically why do you think have always because been white the people primary are victims attacked. of violence in this country. So this is the problem that I have, I think, with the Caucasoid skull shape and the political um, uh, deformities it produces. This man's politics are all whining. He sees something on the news. He sees, oh, a company offers so-and-so to black people. Oh, this college does something I don't like. And he imagines oppression. This is a cognitive it bias. It is oppression. You are capable, of course, of proving any point in a country as large as ours, the beautiful U.S. of A., if you select for smaller points and try to cultivate a narrative. If you want to imagine white people oppressed, you can find evidence for it, especially if you're, you know, 
uh, pulling from headlines and are willing to be very, very sparse in the evidence that you get. In essentially every systemic sense, of course, white people are privileged in this country. In terms of all the opportunities available to them, white people are the beneficiaries of social bias. So I don't really? care so, wait, about harming white people here. If we're all I such care about sir, is the question then... <laughs> as to allowing non-white people. Hang on, into this let him get a, let him get a response in, Vosh. Go ahead, Brandon. It's simply an immigration question. Why, if we're such beneficiaries of this system, right? Why are non-white or why are white people pretending to be non-white to get into college? There was a study that came out recently said thirty-four percent. 34% of uh, college attendee or college uh, applicants pretended that they were non-white to get minority based uh, handouts and to, to, to increase their chances to get into the college. If white people are privileged, um, you, you then have, why did Pocahontas you, you Warren have, pretend have, to be a hang hang on, have all these, You have all, these, um, you have all these white people like uh, Rachel Dolezal, you got Jessica Krug, uh, Carrie Barassa. They pretend that they're not white <laughs> to get an advantage. Why do they do that? You're because citing know, Rachel Dolezal as an example that, of white they know oppression? That being, that, that being white is not advantageous in today's world. Being non-white is. You get all the handouts, all the privileges. The corporations want to hire you. The government so wants this, to help so you. So this is what the I mean with the, the whining to to, and the narrativizing. You I was, keep saying it's whining, but it's true. Well, it, but it is. Every point you've made is the whining. You, you so find these that, tiny scraps. I have nothing if to you, whine about? No, I'm sorry. Have you been denied a college application because of your race? No, not me personally, but okay. I'm sure many white people have. How do they know? Well, because they've actually sued Yale. The, the U.S. Justice Department sued Yale based on discrimination. They said that Asian and white students were denied uh, denied entry because of their race. This is this curious. Has, has why, would they, why would they be bigoted against Asian people if being anti-white is their political priority? Well, the priority is to help black people and people who score lower on SATs. And Asian people have high IQs as well, and so they will discriminate against Asians as well. Who said it's not high IQs? It, I thought it was SAT entire... scores. Okay, well, yes, yeah, so people who do well on, on SAT scores, and so they want to lift up the people who don't. And so, yeah, Asians will be included in that. It's not purely anti-white. But um, oh, how interesting! It, it, white people, white people are the main ones getting caught up in this and getting. What shafted. Frankfurt School doctrine encourages these educators to be anti-Asian in their biases? Since we're playing to the conspiracy angle, is there perhaps another social explanation for why they might be engaging in this behavior besides the Jews trying to keep you down? Could we think? Well, I didn't. I didn't say that every single policy is the Jews trying to keep us down, but uh, the overall, the, the the overall like narrative about nationalism being being evil and being a scary thing it's hitler 2.0 that comes from jewish activists they were absolutely socialists and it's true socialists tend not to like nationalism that much that's pretty reasonable fits within our ideology i don't think not it's that really. spooky not wasn't really. hitler a socialist no he, really? he advanced rapid privatization and gave massive power to the corporate heads of Nazi Germany. No, actually he did. I mean, if you, there's articles proving that he had a almost close to Soviet style. I literally economy, don't right? care so. about, about <laughs> the history of Hitler back to demographic shifts in the West, guys. Yeah, also, why okay, would you so pretend that Hitler is a socialist? Don't you like him? It's, uh, are you a yeah, socialist? I, do, but I, don't, I don't have to love everything okay. hitler does right? gotcha so critical so, support for hitler we didn't like the socialism we the liked the nationalism. i got you um no so, so you look, you're, you're you're not denying anything i've said so far by the way right like i deny jewish, almost everything jewish, you've said about jewish involvement and promoting uh, diversity and multiculturalism well, changing immigration given that laws jews are americans and americans participate in american civil discourse it does make sense that they would have a hand in some stuff that happens in the country you know? Yeah, and, and I think the Irish so, had a hand in it as well. They do so out of selfish interest, believing that if white people are really? homogeneous, that they will be racist and anti-Semitic against isn't, Jews. Isn't the point and of a so democracy to why, vote in your own interest? Wait, wait, hold why on. Should, wait, why should let's... white people put up with this? Why should white people let 2% of the population dictate immigration? Hold on, wait, we're, we're, policy, we're, whinging, everything? we're whinging again. So first yeah. of all, 
2% of the population dictating, you failed to prove this. And this isn't the debate on the Jewish question. You've completely forfeited the immigration thing. I ask you, why should I care? And you start talking about entrance exams for some reason. So well, I assume this is a care? lost I don't question. Care. I, don't, I don't care secondly, what you think this is good or not. This is a democracy. Why not, fellow white man? Should I not care? Be, because because I don't care to win over every single white person to this position. What about there's all the whiteies be, in my audience? There's, okay, well, there's going to be white people that just have these deep seated beliefs that this is, that that nationalism is bad. It's not good. They take non white yes. partners, whatever. We there, there's going to be there's not going nationalism. to be a hundred percent white people who agree with us. I never like this is impossible. To, to win over all white people. So I want to convince white people who, who have uh, pride in their race and their heritage to preserve their nations, so just as Jews preserve their nation in Israel. Aren't you and kind of other um, people, limiting your other audience? People like, I'm only preaching Nazi shit to people who are already Nazis. You've got to win over my audience. You have to explain to them how their life is actually being yeah, negatively I'm, impacted. I, I just did. There's discrimination openly against whites in, in hiring now. They're... Um, they're 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 trying to elevate women and minorities. A guy actually elevate sued. women and minorities. You're getting the, my audience actually, now. They hate a women. A guy and actually won a a, um, a legal case where he, he he claimed that he was fired because he's a white man and they wanted to replace him with two women. It's a good and thing he, that he nobody won. has ever been fired for being black, or that would be a really shocking case of racial bias. This yeah, has that, famously that only ever today. gone one way. It will um, never happen today because. Uh, it's never happened today. Uh, it, it won't. It's it's a shame that black people aren't privileged in any way that represents in any of their like social demographics, like their average income or wealth or attainment. For privileged people, I gotta say, they sure are not showing it in any of the stats that we use to determine privilege. But yeah, leaving they're, aside, they're, because they're we're, we're, we're bouncing all over the just place. Because, just because they don't have high incomes, or most of them don't, does not mean that there aren't systemic attempts to privilege them. Yeah. They are in universities. There's attempts to elevate them they're above other poorer, groups. They're far poorer, but Lizzo did they, get to play the yeah, flute. Yeah, be, because, of, because of their own doing. Uh, but that's the thing. They're trying to rectify this by artificially elevating them up the pay ladder, up the food chain in society. And that's I what uh, gotcha. Joe Biden, that's what Joe Biden and Joe Kamala Biden. Harris are all about. So that's in their a, whole administration is based on equity and we'd have to help the, in a uh, democracy. the underprivileged. Yes, that's true. We do believe in that. In a democracy, uh, generally speaking, the people in a country get to make decisions about how that country is run. Uh, we don't have a perfect democracy, uh, not even close, but we have something approximating one. And it seems like what you take issue with is the very concept of people who disagree with you being allowed to participate in that system. The problem that I have is that my voting block overwhelmingly resides with non-white people because white people are more likely to be uh, racists or low IQ or whatever, the, your preferred voting blocks. Um, and in this respect, if we're to talk of selfish interest, you accuse the Jews of being selfish, but you're literally arguing for selfishness as a political principle. You are the yeah, Jew because here, we're, you see? It's, it's, it's our nation. So if, if we're living in so the West, So your selfishness is nations. okay. I see, I see. Yes, it is. It is in my nation. Jews can be selfish in Israel. They can go to Israel and the be selfish there. The feeble-mindedness no of the racist, where you accuse they the Jew of Israel being Israel selfish, be selfish, but then when care. you do the same thing, you're like, uh, oh, well, when we do it, it's fine. I don't care yeah, for nationalism. It, it, if it's they fine hear, in our they nation. can do what it's they want. It's fine in our nation. If Jews want to be selfish and say, we need Israel for the Jews because we're persecuted, but we need to make every white country majority non-white so that we won't be persecuted, why the hell would white people go along with that and allow They're not making these, every ma country majority non-white. These 2% non minority dictate immigration policies. They're not. Or dictate foreign policies. You're, you're afraid of them, but they're not doing that. Yeah, they... What do you mean they're not doing that? Of course the they Jews are. The Jews do not dictate American immigration policy. They don't dictate it directly. It's not like they have... I Everyone mean, dictates everything in indirectly. Oh, oh, now wait. Now but it's indirectly? When we, at, what? when we look at the... The Irish at, indirectly like, dictate immigration when we policy. Look at, Women when we do. Look at God help us. changes in immigration policy, right? I mean, if you go back to 1965 in America or other countries, Jews were influential in lobbying the government to change the law to get rid of the quota system were the irish because because no it was jewish they organizations Wait. like the jew like the american jewish committee was neck deep in lobbying the government to change the quota system that's crazy and the, and the, and and the, the non-jewish people listen to them are they not allowed to well, lobby okay. uh, 
Well, okay, so because they lobbied the government and got something passed, we all have to accept it and agree with it. And not it sounds like you feeble-minded Gentiles uh, were, uh, you know, uh, susceptible so you're not to lobbying. It. I'm not, well, the problem is, is that your premise is retarded. Every p uh, private interest group does lobbying for the government. You yeah, like hyper fixate on that. the Jew, like, well, this one time, this one Jewish that, group. Right? But listen, I've, I've done the circuit with these arguments. There's no like direct causative argument that could be made for like the Jews did this, but you like scapegoating yes, it because you don't want to believe that other yes, white is. people were responsible for you having to talk to a, a Mexican when you go get groceries now. You don't want to accept it, so you have to so externalize because they, it. So because they convinced uh, some white people in the government to do something, I have to accept Where's it the and agency? not with it? Where's the agency for those white people? They did it. They passed the law. Yeah, yeah so what? So, well, then, well, then we were like, ah, oh, well, we were tricked by the Jews. Why are you so weak? I didn't say I didn't say we were tricked. I said they somehow convinced a number of politicians to agree with them based on based on the basic arguments. ways lobbying function based yeah based on, on the basic on function of lobbying argument. yeah yeah so so what are you saying you're saying that okay they did it they they lobbied and got what they want and i have lots to just of go groups along lobbied. with it as a white man a and i have to go along yeah, with that, the plan to replace my people hold on nobody's replacing your people and it is true that yes, in are. a democracy when you elect representatives the representatives will pass laws uh the main people who care about immigration are companies you know that right like the so the uh, supply of labor and free movement of capital is massively yeah, easier when you have other free immigration laws. There's other people who agree with them. They're the big unions support it now. Big churches support it now. Just because there's it's other good people for our who economy. agree with them, just because there's other people who agree with them, doesn't mean that there wasn't a role that they played. It doesn't mean it wasn't an they imperative play a role. role. That, wait, that's this is such a scapegoat. They play a role in everything. They the don't Italians have their own motives. Role. They have a their role. own motives to do Th it. This is the nefarious Jewish question. We have undeniable proof that Jewish people just, may have at some point been present to when you them things happen. Saying, I just quoted to you an, a, a Jewish activist saying, we're doing it oh, because no, a Jewish we're afraid activist. of white nationalism. That guy, was it Soros? Of Hitler, Hitler 2.0. So, do, do, you, do you want to quote from Soros' son where he says that Soros does what he does because he's Jewish? That's wait. That's great. Wait, a Holocaust survivor might have been influenced by surviving the Holocaust to oppose people like you. That's well, wait. Hold on. Exactly. So, so I need I need a I, minute to reconcile that I? with my priors. That's going to take. Okay. Me so a you're just bit. you're just agreeing with the Jews and their agenda. So you're saying that uh, that Jews have this agenda. Well, that if a Jew says of, something, of, I agree with, then I will people. agree with that Jewish person. Oh, okay. So you agree with Soros that that white people are a danger if they're a homogenous block. I don't like any homogenous blocks. Them. Um, in fact, okay, so, well, I'm so, actually famous on my channel for arguing with a black leftist that uh, African countries shouldn't be allowed to expel white people in order to create black ethno states. I don't like any kind. It's not a racialized thing. I got I got banned off Twitch for my spicy comments about Israel. I don't like ethno states. For me, it has nothing to do with punishing white people. Yeah, well, you don't like ethno states, so I have to allow Jews to subvert immigration <laughs> policy. To they go through the same channels ethnicity. that everybody else gets to go through. The, if you want, care. you can lobby the they government to change them. They, they should, should be stopped. Be stopped. My, it's the system you live in. Yeah, so we should what, change no, it. What you're talking about right now, this is what I mean with the whinging, you baby. You're, this is the JQ, you know. You're the one you don't like that the world has changed and you have and to make it conspiracy. Wait, hold on. Quit getting angry. You have to get angry on the subject we're on. It makes you look weak-minded if you have to trail okay, off the other ones. So just... We're talking now about the system, and you're like, well, Jews were one of the groups that lobbied for a thing that made sense given their interests. Self-interested lobbying is literally how democracies work. Who cares? Yeah, and I'm, you just and don't I'm like the outcomes. For white self yeah, I, I'm advocating for white self-interest lobbying. So how is and, it in our self-interest? And Jews oppose it. Because so it's how in the is of, it in it's the our self-interest? It's in the interest of white people to have a white majority so that they can How? wield political power, they can wield economic power, and they could advance themselves in their race. So, okay, wait. So let's let's focus on this because self-interested voting is literally like how a democracy works. That's what you're supposed to do. You vote for what you yeah. care about and okay. you aggregate those desires into kind of like a, a collective drive. So personally, I think that once you're in a country, you're a member of that country and you get to participate in that process but you are arbitrarily arguing that a specific racial group within this country has a higher priority when it comes to their political actualization than other groups. This is based on your fifis? No, this is based on the historic 
whiteness of America, Canada, I don't care. Australia, Europe. I do not um, care. Your, Europe is the homeland of white people. I think Who it cares? should remain white. Uh, just like I think that Japan should remain Japanese. Why? You know, be, because it's good to have different ethnic groups in the world is just as it's good to have different breeds of dogs in the world. Do we want to mix out all the breeds of dogs or do we want to have sure. distinct, distinct dogs? Uh, you can I mix mean, them I, I think, I, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people would, would say that it's better to have biodiversity of races or in, in, the, in the case of animals, different species of animals. And there's a lot of uh, concern about animals going extinct. But then when it comes to race, we just think, well, let's just mix all the people together and have a brown race. A, I don't care. I don't, yeah, okay. I don't think you, the you need for, I don't think the do. need for maintaining people who are very light skin and very dark skin is so great that it necessitates creating a racial ethno state. This is very silly. Like, well, in the future, well, I do. what if there are no very pale people? This is why we need a fourth Reich today. Don't be silly. Why should white people be prioritized with political actualization here in the States? Well, I, I think the example of South Africa is, is interesting, right? So white people uh, once controlled that nation and now they don't. And there is a racial grievance there with black people because of the apartheid. Mm -hmm. And now white people are at a huge disadvantage. You have they're not. brutal farm attacks in, no, in they're South not. Africa. They're you overwhelmingly have, you, you, you powerful. Have, you you have you have um, affirmative action policies. I mean, speak to any white South African; they'll tell you they're they're kicked to the bottom of the list for jobs. Well, okay, they, they well, can't speak find to jobs. a wait. Speak to uh, a black South this, African. And what are you going to listen to? Yeah, then black South Africans have the power. Look okay, at the parliament. Go, Show go, me a white wait. person in the government. Yeah, South Africa is like ninety two percent black. Look at who okay, has the a, money. So, so then white people should once again, you say right? white people are oppressed in an area where they're overwhelmingly overrepresented in basically every demographic of power. So then why aren't they in the government? Why aren't they setting policy? Because they're an overwhelming minority of the population. But if they control everything, you'd want to have your people in power. And I didn't making say decisions they controlled the everything. government. Wait, hold on. Fathom nuance. Okay, so, so they, I they said only they were disproportionately powerful. So why do they have like the the um the affirmative action policies down there. It's called Black Empowerment, BE or something like that. And for they the reasons are, I just said, if why would white, white people, people are disproportionately wait, uh, what what is this policy? It, it, it's it's for jobs where black people get preference. So, like I just said, because white people have overwhelming advantages when it comes to educational and economic attainment, the affirmative action policies exist to counterbalance the advantage of white people. You don't put in place affirmative action to benefit the privileged group. You do it to benefit the disadvantaged group. Yeah, so why, group. Why, would, why would these powerful white people, these racist and powerful white people, want to privilege or uh, elevate black people? They don't. The government, which is mostly run by the people who are mostly by blacks, blacks, does. Okay. Yeah, because it's so mostly then, then blacks black people have the political in the country. Power. So blacks so, have wait, political okay, power. let's run this through again. Okay, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll say it slower the so, third time if needed. White people in South Africa have disproportionate educational and economic attainment, but they don't control the government because it's a democracy and most of South Africa is black. That so the government that of South that Africa be the case. Why passes the affirmative action having, laws. Why don't the political parties have white people in charge? What? Because they're it's voted just, on. Okay, but the, the actual people in the party you know are not this necessarily works? voted on. Wait, do you wait, hold on. Do you know how this works? So so like the, the, the main party in South Africa, do they they vote for the person to get into that party? Or they elect him or they just appoint him? So a candidate runs for election and the people vote on a candidate. And given the fact yeah, that South Africa a... is majority black. And politics are heavily racialized, considering they were okay. under apartheid until recently. Generally speaking, parties that represent the majority of the black people in black South Africa have black candidates. So the government and, and they, is run by mostly black people. And so they, they don't they don't vote for white candidates. So I bet if a white person ran for one of these parties, nobody would vote for them because blacks are voting for blacks. And so yes, there is a racial grievance in the okay. Formerly so then, apartheid South Africa. So then white people are being disempowered, disenfranchised. They don't have the same say that black people have. <laughs>
especially in politics. The okay. Most powerful, well, okay. Most powerful instrument in society is the government. So we'll and try. So we'll try this. One, black, okay. If the we'll try this run one more time. People, in the interest of black people to elevate the positions of black people above white people, then why the hell would white people want to partake in such a system? I, why do why they stay they, there? Why, why, they're trying to leave. A lot of them try to leave, but they can't get uh, refugee status. They're not. Wait. I mean, I've, I've talked to these people. I've, no, I've wait, hold on. Them. Stop. You haven't. I'm more familiar with yes, the situation than you. No, you heard a couple stories I, I of just, white farmers just, getting attacked. Two of you, wait, you don't even know how their political guy. system works. Um, the the white people, it, as is always the case with any large racial group in South Africa, there are poor white people. But on average, they're doing a lot better than the average black person. They are sheltered there's, from there's a lot of negative slums. government policy. Yes, like I said, yeah, there so... are poor white people. However, on average, do you know how averages work? It's when you take a group of numbers and you use a mathematical formula to derive a single number from a collection. And you can use that to learn stuff. Okay, none of this really matters to me. I'm just telling you that when white people are disempowered the way that they have been in South Africa. And now in, in, a, in a democracy, as you say, black people will vote for other black people and not for the white people. And they will do that so that they can get advantages. This is not in the interest of white people. So that's you, a reason for think... white people to separate. That's a reason for white people to have their own state. So, so you they realize can have their own people in power. The only reason this is an issue is because the white people in South Africa were people like you, right? Yeah, they made a mistake by not separating from from the blacks. No, no, no. As in, you created the problem. This is always a, a we're trying to find the guy who did it situation well, yeah, they, they, where they you have the all problem these by... problems that are created by like very racist white people. And you, a very racist, I think, white person um, are like, yeah, hmm. Shame how all those black people are distrustful of white candidates who majority vote in well, white okay, interests. Okay, how could so, that have happened? Okay, so so that's the perfect thing. That then, if black people are distrustful of white people, they have a historical grievance against white people. Then why would white people want to exist in this kind of democracy where they can't ever win an election because blacks have a grudge against them and they're, they're just going to be progressively disenfranchised? Well, maybe in perpetuity. Uh, the scars of apartheid so will heal. Wait, not why into, the fuck wait, would we want to perpetuity. continue to participate in this? Wait, if it was into perpetuity, then how is it that white candidates are able why to do, win when they run for election in local offices in areas that are majority black why, in the American South? Why, why, do they, why do they have in South Africa breakaway territories like Arania? Because a lot of where, the white people there white miss people, being able to own slaves? No, it's because there, there's all kinds of yeah. violence done against white farmers. Yeah, yeah a little we'll bit, like a in, little bit like in, in South Rhodesia. Africa. Just, Just like, like in Rhodesia, Rhodesia the other basically slave state. Lost yeah. Power, yeah. When, when, when white people lost power, they were persecuted. Maybe, Their farms well, maybe were taken you from shouldn't them. like do Their the farms slave were state taken thing. from them. Okay, That's so you're crazy. just justifying it. You're so justifying wait, hold on. In this case, you're literally talking about like a colonized people, re like repelling a foreign army. Like what you're okay, essentially okay, saying okay, is like, so, why are these black people not working with us as you're like raping and killing them? So, Rhodesia, so white, like white this farmers, is the black people so having white, grievance. So white farmer, white farmers deserve what they got there. They deserve to be killed and have their land taken from them. They're actually calling them back now. A lot of the white farmers are saying, please come back. Wait, are we talking about Rhodesia or crisis. South Africa? Rhodesia, there was a huge uh, crisis there after white people got kicked out, basically. Yeah, do you know why? Because when white people because came in with guns and took over, no, when white people, when white people came in, when white people came in with guns and conquered Rhodesia and later they were overthrown and repelled because it wasn't a democratic state where black and white people were getting along. It was one where black people were held at gunpoint. There was no democracy. It was so undemocratic. Rhodesia was so okay. fucked that the British colonial empire refused to endorse it. How bad do you have to be for the so, British to not even be willing to defend you? And they did So that's just more proof that blacks and whites can't live together in Africa. You are the problem in this scenario. You're like, you're shooting America. a black guy blacks, and you're like, why can't we get along? What? Well, do blacks not shoot whites? Do blacks not do anything in Rhodesia? Bad to white people? Uh, eventually yeah, in they Rhodesia. did. They were right eventually to because you were the invading did. army. Yeah. Of, yeah. It was, eventually, it right yeah. South Africa. So this is what happens. Okay. Wait, so you're, then you're, stop like, you're being the, the occupying army. You are making the point for me for racial separation. They have a no, you So again, they hate white people. Let me let me try to stuff. let me try to run this white by you again. Okay. And so now these people in Africa. 
How about we just separate? These people in Africa were separate until white people invaded, killed, and set up plantations for them to work on. And then that was when they hated the white people. People in Africa well, white, white pe didn't white hate white there. people Dude, white until people, white people white gave settlers. them a reason to hate them. White people were down there for hundreds of years ago, man. They, they and, Dutch settlers were. And how do you think South Africa's other... uh, racial situation they, they was even, 300 years ago? I don't even think there was. There, they were actually like almost separatist states there for white people before. And then the, the Boer Wars actually pushed them all together into one state. So prior to this, the whites were kind of running their own communities. No, they weren't. All of these areas were majority the black. The Transvaal state. Wait, hold on. Wait. So just to be clear, because we're, this is like comedy, the absurdity of what we're talking about. You're bemoaning the anti-white hatred of groups of people that you invaded and conquered and subjugated to hundreds of years of slavery and then borderline slavery conditions. And then in the past few decades, when they finally take their countries back from the occupiers, from people well, who were no so country. racist no that country. the English Empire... There was no South Africa. Hold on. Before before the white people came, there was the no concept. Wait, Rhodesia, the concept of a okay? nation state didn't exist as far back as the first uh, mm -hmm. uh, colonial expeditions into South Africa. Yeah, but stick so with they, my point. they didn't have nations. Stick with my point. So you are bemoaning, oh, poor us, everyone hates the white man, when you are yeah. literally going in there and subjecting them to the worst conditions imaginable. What do you mean you? I did that? Did I personally do that? I'm sorry, so are you I not, are you not here identifying with the white race today? Should I divest you, yes. Martinez? So, so the white race is collectively guilty for all of these sins? Wait, you are, because you're ide ideologically complicit. I, I'm, I'm collectively not. I'm guilty not. for... Uh, so I'm collectively guilty for what white people did anywhere at any time. No, you're collectively guilty for what because racists I love, have done. Because, oh, because, so because I support whites and don't want whites to be persecuted and want whites to thrive, I have to take the, the blame for all this? Is, could you just for a moment stop being a woman with me and like directly own up to what you believe? Oh, you just hate me because I support white people? Fuck out of here with this shit. Jesus yeah, you Christ, do. were you, you bullied in high people. school? For, just for a moment, people. listen to what I was saying. You're complaining about white grievance in areas where you conquered, raped, invaded, and enslaved. Obviously, well, conquered, people raped, there. Invaded, enslaved, all, all over people, the world. Hold I mean, on, stop. Africa. Again, what about ism? You cry. So what? In these so areas, what? of course, yeah. there's racial grievance. God willing, okay. given enough time. Okay, it so will you're telling me. So you're telling me I have to I have to accept the racial grievance and I have to um, go no. along with it and I and I have to. You don't wait. Do you live in South they, Africa? Do you live in Zimbabwe? No, but I, do well, then I you don't have, have to deal to, with any of this. Okay, but I'm concerned about. It. I'm basically just but making you're concerned. the argument because you you whine about stuff that you haven't experienced. People, when when white people become a minority as they are in South Africa. This white this people is have what always happens. been a minority in South Africa for the entirety of the oh, okay. time that white people have been okay. There. So it's an example of whites being a minority and having their political power stripped from them and them being they didn't persecuted. wait, hold on, they didn't have so hold on, they didn't have their political power stripped from them in a democratic sense, they were the autocratic rulers of that territory, and then they got brought down to being equal citizens. They were not equal citizens made well, lower. They're not equal citizens anymore. They were the rulers made equal. Yeah, but now, now the tables Think are Think for a now, moment before you say what you're about to say. Now white people are living. Now there's a quite you're about a few to say white something people living dumb. in slums. There's a, quite a few white people down there suffering. Oh there's no, quite a few are there white black people, people living, living in slums? slums? Maybe they are. Maybe, Maybe they are, but there I, might I be. We I should get care. some reporters on the scene care. to see if there are any black slums so you, in South Africa. You, under, you understand, or if it's just the white I'm people. Advocating, I'm advocating for racial separation here, and I think this would and solve doing a the terrible issue. job of it. All right, think, all right, I hang think, on. Let him let let Brandon get in there a little bit more. I think, of course, I think that would solve the issue of racial grievance. So, if black people have this antagonistic view of America, where they hate the flag and they hate the nation and they hate the history and they hate it all. They want to burn it to the ground, as BLM did. Then I think it's a pretty smart idea for white people to want to separate away from that, to get away from that, you can to go avoid to any, to, to avoid all the carnage that's on the way. This is a and democracy, so, and so um, it makes no sense for white people to just accept the status quo, accept the state of affairs of you know anti-whiteism being preached 
from the pulpit of Washington and from the media and all this and just go along with it because uh, you're not going slavery, along with it. You voted okay? for Trump because because my slavery and, and because of all this. So, so wait, hold on. Wait, it's wait, not stop, wait, stop with the narrativizing. Here. It's a democracy. Oh, if you don't, if you don't like what's happening, you have a right to vote to bring about different political outcomes. We're discussing the morality of those outcomes. Just because you want something doesn't mean it's yeah, right. And, and I and I think white I think whites voting for Trump was an expression of that, wasn't it? Yes, but we have to ask whether it's moral to want something. You're saying white people want this or want that. Well, now let's ask: Is it good for them to want this? Is it morally yes. just? Because it's if we good, just go by what people want. People, yeah. Okay, so you believe that every person should, it's always morally good for a person to advocate for something if it's good for them exclusively? Are you pro rape? I, I, I don't care if it's mor morally good, okay? I, I think that white people existing- They're not sending is, our best. So, so white people existing is, is immoral? Is that what you're saying? What kind of retarded interpretation of what I said was Why that? Are Get you the fucking that, banana then? out of your Why ear. Why the fuck when are did you I saying say, that? No, 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 you're trying no, to get no, me no, to no, no. You're trying no. to get me to explain why us existing is immoral If thing. you, do you think I said that? That white people have, existing is immoral? Why would I ever have, why would I ever have to did justify I say that? our existence on moral grounds? So we're not about asking to defend your existence. I was just asking you if you think it's always moral for a group or a person to advocate for something just because they want it. No, not in every case. Okay. And then you said, I don't care about ethics, which is fantastic. So, okay. Yeah, how, in, how... in the sense that white people existing, I shouldn't have to explain that morally. Okay. So white people, well, you do, everything has to be justified morally, of course. Um, no. Now we're to talk about white people existing. So there are more white people alive in the world now today than there were 50 years ago. Uh, it seems things are going well. Yeah, but we're a global minority, and I just gave you the statistics Every race showing is a that global we minority. will, we will, whites are a minority in the world compared to blacks, compared to Chinese, and all the rest. Okay. And we're we're a declining group. Well, whereas the other groups are not declining. How are we declining? Not not in the same way. Our population, our numbers are declining. Our birth rates are below replacement level in every single Western country. Then f more people. Oh, okay, fine. But the fact is they're just going to keep bringing more and more non-white people birth here. birth rates are declining everywhere. The only reason our okay. birth rates declined faster is because we industrialized faster. It's okay, evidence but, of our incredible but, level of development that we this, hit that this peak is, before the This countries. is going to result in a white minority very, very, very soon. So it's so All it's in our interest to try to reverse thing. this. It's in, it, Okay, it's in our interest to try to reverse this. It's in our interest to try to boost our birth rates. And how? end immigration. Wait, how oh, would ending there's immigration there's boost our birth rates? Well, look, I, I I support some immigration from white countries, so I'm fine it, with poles going to the UK or whatever. I mean, that's that's not a big deal to me. But importing tens of millions of people from the Middle East and Africa, with very different cultures, you know, Muslims and all these people Wait, who what, uh, present, what, present, present all kinds of threats to us. What threats? Um, Demographically, terrorism, they commit fewer terrorism, crimes. Muslims terrorism. don't commit the Oh, crimes. really? They, they commit the majority of terrorism in, in Europe and the most casualties. I'm talking about America right years. now. Um, oh, but if so we, you, if, want to, you don't want to talk about America, not Europe? Well, I am American. If we want to talk so about what? Europe. I'm not American. I'm not American. What are you? Wait, then why Canadian. are we talking about America? Canadian. I'm, well, we can talk about any white What is it with you general. Canadians pretending to be Americans for the sake of political discourse? You know the Nazi shit doesn't fly as well, well up there, so you try to export well, it down you here. You're a fucking immigrant, talk about, You don't Martinez. want to talk about anything other than, other than America. Yeah, because so I'm a fucking American because my done. blood is red and my oxygen so, pumps freely okay, through it. Yeah, because my big fucking American dick. Obviously, we I don't want to talk about, about Canada. Canada. But you don't want to talk about Canada. What, did you see a moose yesterday? Yeah, no shit. Great. Keep it. I don't care. Um... Yeah, no, in America, all these minority groups that I'm supposed to be afraid of commit fewer crimes on average than the, um, than the, um, the, uh, the, the native people, so, population. So black people commit fewer crimes on average than who? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant like Muslims and people from Africa and the Middle East and stuff. Uh, black people here no. in America do commit more crimes on average, though there are reasons for that. Yeah, yes, they do. Over half of homicides, but in Europe... The majority of, of terrorists and the most deadly terrorist attacks have been radicalized Muslims. That's crazy. Well, why don't we see you that have, here in America? You, you, you have, 
I mean, you haven't had Muslim terrorism in America? We've, of course, so wait again. I'm going to give you a chance to walk that back, okay? I didn't say we, we've we never it had it. So yeah, when I say don't see it, what I'm talking about in a country oh, so with a third of a billion people is that it doesn't represent a significant or substantial portion of the amount of violence or terrorism we see. Just try to that's, keep up. That's when I say not true. we don't I mean, I think see... The FBI stats a few years ago said that Muslim terrorism was the, the majority of terrorism and then left-wing anarchistic terrorism was second. That was, that that is was a few years objectively ago. incorrect. Yeah, uh, that, that was something I saw a few years ago in, in, in the U.S. In a dream, perhaps? It was FBI. In a dream about the FBI. It's far no, right it was groups FBI. that do the terrorism, actually. Hang on oh, a second, okay, guys. So hang on, hang on. This is a good point to break in for just a second. We've got about a half hour left in the debate before we get to the closing statements Q&A. Before we get uh, into the next half hour, the first the first half of this debate, the first hour, it was uh, pretty pretty blood sporty, which I'm okay with, and I enjoy the uh, the back and forth. But we've kind of come into some kind of rhythm where we can have uh, maybe some some decent dialogue the last thirty minutes um, as we kind of wind this thing down. So the floor is back. If you guys out in the audience have questions, make sure you send in your super chats. Go ahead, gentlemen. I just want us all to get along. Look, at the end of the day, the facts here are simple. Besides this like white grievance, we're about to be overtaken, we're gonna lose our country bullshit that they've been saying for 150 years. Every bit of evidence we have towards the value of immigration has pointed in favor of continuing it. Um, you know, There's a reason why Nazis reject empiricism, it's because reality makes them look very bad. Um, it's, it's just sort of a, a habitual so problem. So why, why can't we have white immigration? Now let's go back to the 1950s. You can have white immigration. Well, let's go to whites only immigration. So we go no. back to the 1950s quota system that tilted the immigration to Northern Europe and Eastern Europe and go back to that. That was fine. What's I'm fine with, with how that? we have it now. But I want it's more, so actually. great, yeah, of course you are, but mm -hmm. white people I have a white who people. actually care, white people who care about their race or care about their heritage or want a homogenous state. Why don't should like we, that. I don't care don't, about a homogenous like, state. Don't like that. See, the yeah, problem, you you, the problem is at the end of the day, Vosh. the problem is at the end of the day, like you, you want every, you can never, like you can never utopia, offer right? a better argument than like, well, we should defend white people because we should defend white people. It's always because after the brain damage you have, real you presuppose. group of people. Well, well why do we should black try to make the world people? better what, 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 hang for on. as many why do, people why as we do can. Black people, what, why do black people defend black people then? We should defend everyone and try to maximize the well-being for but everyone why does BLM as best as possible. Defend black people then? BLM doesn't advocate for a black ethno state, Martinez. You are okay, advocating they, for a white they, ethno state. They, they advocate for pro-black policy. They're, they're not concerned okay. about white people. If, if those pro-black black black policies are sensible. Have, the problem white, white is victims of, when, hang on a second. You, when you, they you, say you like pro-black policy, guy. what they mean is helping black people. And when you Andrew, say pro-white policy, you mean hurting white people. He won't let me talk. Look, uh, you interrupt as much as he does. I have a counter next to me. Like so you, let, I, let's the, do, sorry, let's it's do just my minutes. my white jeans. I colonized just, the conversation. Well, so look, BLM, what, I, I do what's this racial grievance? Forth, right. I'm Polish, BLM Irish. You're Martinez. We can't people. get along. The racial gap really does widen. So, you know? so BLM BLM's allowed to advocate for black people. There's other black organizations that advocate for black people, even though there's absolutely no laws. Uh, discriminating against black people. It's all been abolished and rescinded and we're moving towards the opposite of that, which is black, black supremacy, black privilege. Um, and so, uh, you know, why, why the hell would white people then say, oh, okay, let's just let all the, my, the racial minorities do that, but we're not going to do that. We're, we're going to be individuals and we're not going to care about race. We're just going to, um, are black people others... trying to keep white people from immigrating in? let the others care about race. Well, can you answer I've that viewed... question? Are black people saying we should protect black people by not allowing white immigration? Is that a thing that they say? Uh, I think that there are black politicians who probably do want to tilt immigration for black people. I know. Wait, hold or, on. Or, wait, or who, non, who here is out there? People. What black politicians are saying we should stop having immigration from Western European countries? Get the f out of here. That's well, the they, thing. They, the they difference, know that it's the difference is, there, and though. this is, and this is, this is the reason why, like, Stacey chose Tyrone over you in school. It's because they're not cowards. So when they, they say that. when they say they value pro-black policy, they mean helping black people. 
When you say pro-white, you mean hurting black people. You're so, a coward. You don't give a so f about when, helping white people. What are your policies on uh, economic Biden, divestment? Wait, hey, policies Biden on economic says, divestment. What will you do to help the, the wages of the average white working this? family? What are you when going Biden to do says, about economic alienation border, in the suburbs? Joe Biden says it's a good thing whites are becoming a minority. Give me a policy that will help white people. Give me a policy that will help white people. Stopping immigration from this is what I mean. Countries. It's always about it, hurting non-white people. You don't have one. What are you going to do about in income white, inequality or in capitalism? White, investing in white communities. Uh, let's investing say, how? Let's have, let's have a pro NATO policy. All right, Vosh, giving, let me get giving, in lo there. giving loans. I don't know. Giving loans to small business owners. Whatever. There's a lot of things that can be oh, done. Giving loans to small business but owners. Okay. The fact is that Joe Biden says that you're it's a good thing for? whites are becoming a minority, and you can you should surge the border. That was his statement in the debate with Trump in 2020. Surge the border, and that's exactly what they did. Because he knows that these non-white people coming in are going to be good Democrat voters. This is exactly what I mean. Gifts. If you and I, I'm being serious here. If you talk to a BLM act activist, hey, what can you do to help black people? They're policy invested. They'll tell you about ways to like reshuffle the city's treasury to invest in this or that to care yeah. about the system. But this guy, how will you help white people by banning immigration? This by, guy's by a fuck. No, by, stop. By, Hold on. This by, guy's wait, by man, Martinez. So white people you're, don't go Martinez, extinct, you're talking too right? much. It's crazy. White people this are going to go extinct. And so this is, I think he, that's kind of he doesn't white care people. about white people. He cares about the race war. But actual white people day to day in America are not being hurt by fucking immigration. They're being hurt by capitalism, by inflation, by wage hikes and gas prices and cities isn't that dumping, choke the life out of their dumping no. millions of cheap so again, laborers wait, into the market. Isn't that helping he them? Doesn't isn't that care. hurting their wages too? He only cares so about white people in so far as it's a vehicle doesn't to hurt, hurt their people. wages doesn't it hurt their wages to dump millions of low income or, or low, no. low educated wages on average go up through immigration labor. so you're no. telling me wages that dumping go up. millions and millions of yes low i'm telling labor you labor makes wages go up yes it's been proven over and over really? this is what i mean so he doesn't even like know a, the data on this of, because he only pretends to care about white would, people when it gets back otherwise. at tyrone from high school it's never so, about so white flooding people. Flooding a labor market makes the wages yes, go up. Yes, yes, labor's a resource. This, this Keep up. This is almost like the opposite of what so many economists say. You can you say, can research you, it. Okay, Just so Google it. Have, Google. You, it's you there. No, no. Stop getting mad at me for you not doing research. You can here. Google it. So, like, I don't know anyone who's who's. I don't care what that. you know. You don't know anything. Do it. Google Borjas the, the wage dumping, studies, immigration research. Low here, labor I have links on this. Hold on. Ultimate here. Uh, how could bringing Jorge in here possibly? I'll show you. I'll happily show you. The research has been done, but you don't care. You don't care at all. It's about wasn't the race there, war to you. Wasn't there research? Wasn't there research to the? You can put that effect? in the uh, private chat. Yeah, yeah I will. Here, hold on. Let me. Uh, okay. I gotta find it. There's a big link here. Wasn't there a study by a guy called Borjas that said the opposite of that? No, it didn't. Borjas, okay. who is like a very anti-immigration guy, you know, at least in respect oh, to like, he's very okay. cynical when it comes to like the effects he's a, of immigration. He's a racist, is he? No, I just said he's anti-immigration. I don't know his race policies. This is an econ guy. Um, he said it was a wash, but that was an older study. Future studies have indicated that even for low skill um, immigrants, like undocumented immigrants, um, the net effect on wages is overall positive. Um, there's only one demographic that loses in the short term, which is native born high school dropouts who experience something like a 1.7% decrease in average wages, but it eventually goes up because even those people benefit from the added, um, labor in the system, which, which eventually sort of, you know, a rising tide rises all boats. Um, hold on. It's one of these 5G race and IQ spanking. Yeah, so let's let's get that immigration from from Europe exclusively. How about let's get that? it from everywhere we can get it? <clears throat> Got to no, get this country get it, beefed let's up get it from Europe because uh, you know I know you want to turn every single country in the world into the tranny utopia, into I love the, the rainbow tranny nation, utopia. into the rainbow nation. But yeah. so you so you're a you're an imperialist, right? You're a cultural imperialist. You don't you don't want yeah. there to be any nation on earth that differs from your view. I'm a tranny you imperialist. Want, Every single you, guy will be yes, feminized. Yes, you are a tranny yeah. imperialist. This is you want completely everybody true. to be This is a real political belief that uh, serious people stop care with that about. that word too, Martinez. Don't use that word on the on the channel. I can you, use it because I have trans friends. Also, transgender is fine. He's trans. He's trans himself. So. 
he can use yeah. these slurs, alpha right? to sigma that's right Whew. so um so you, anyway so you don't want any nation in the world to be ethnocentric Correct. Um, you, you, so, so you're, what are you going to do is let, let's say a country in Europe decides, Hey, we're, we're actually going to do this. We're going to do the ethno state. What are you going to do about that? Um, I would hope you could politically pressure them. I mean, you can't invade just over that. That'd be horrible, <laughs> but you can like, you know, so, threaten sanctions. So you you want to do really war. Bad. You want to do war with them, right? I just said, you can't invade them. I just said the opposite of what you, you, you can't. So you want to pressure them with sanctions if they, they have an ethno state. Well, depending on how they do the ethno state, like if they end up mass killing or deporting people in their borders, then that could potentially be a crime against humanity. Depending on how bad what they do is, invasion might be warranted. Like, for example, if South Africa started slaughtering the six million white people within its borders, I would be fully in favor of NATO atomizing that place um, uh, in the dust. You, you, you'd love that, right? Because you'd be getting back at them uppity blacks in South Africa, getting mad at their oppressors. But hey, I'm consistent. Well, yeah, I just I, don't I would, like ethno states. I would be for I would be for helping out some white people down there. So you would be okay with military interference to prevent the formation of an ethno state? No, I would be I would be for creating an ethno state for white people in South Africa. Okay, so you don't care about which areas historically belongs to which people. Of course, you're well, the imperialist. Well, on, you don't believe that. You don't believe that. You, so you no, because this is. I, I love that I tease you, this you out think, of you. You're you, like you Africa for Africans. Everyone. You're like Africa for Africans and Europe for Europeans. And then you're like, also, yeah. we should have a white ethno state in South Africa. Fuck well, out of here. Look, you're the imperialist, bro. Years, big guy. Those people have been there for hundreds of years. Okay, there's who's been there space. for thousands? There, there's plenty. Yeah, they can have their ethno state. I'm not saying they shouldn't have it. I want them. What to do you have think it. a Good. South African ethno state let's, would look like? Let Let's have ethno states. If If black people think that white people are going to do them harm, then the, the the easy solution to that is to separate based on race. If black people in America think white people are going to do them harm, then let's separate. I think they're going to do us harm. I think they're doing us harm right now. I agree. And Every time solution, any group of people I mean, within a country disagree, they about, should separate. Well, I mean, it's happening. We're going right? che to form the Balkans and... all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? I think that's. Yeah, the that's Balkans a good are doing example. great, bro. The, that's a good example. The post Yugoslav I mean, collection I mean, of at, states um, are doing great, dog. Look at, look at Ukraine. I think that's a perfect example, right? Where you had Russians who were, were in the east of the country. And I believe that if, if um, Russians had been excluded from the Ukrainian state back in 1991, I don't think you have this war in Ukraine. Because they weren't excluded the ex from the Ukrainian the, state. I know, but I'm saying if they were, I don't think Putin could have invaded because Putin used the Russians there, their existence there, to justify his invasion. He says, I'm here to protect them from the evil Nazi Ukrainians. But if they had excluded them out before this in 1991, says, look, this is a Ukrainian state for Ukrainians. We don't want Russians in here. We have historical beef, right? We had problems for a long time. I think there's no war in Ukraine. So that's proof to me that multiculturalism can be a danger ah, to your nation. But then a lot of you, the Russians, you fail to understand the, that the, the reason Russians, this is an issue is because the Russians are like hang you. On. They're ethno states. Hang on. The hang only on. No, problem, not. well, no, you're, you're prescribing not. political solutions not to the, you're, you're prescribing political solutions to the problem of people like you existing. Look, like you're no, a disease no, no. saying like, you you're, you're a disease about? saying like, Big okay, guy. you need to take Big some guy. medicine Russians, because otherwise like I will kill you. Big guy, those Russians are not ethno staters. Okay. They have Mongol, Mongol soldiers. They have Chechens. They yeah, have which Muslims, they're, which they're conscripting they in disproportionate numbers. So they die yeah, in the front lines. Russia is extremely too. ethnically supremacist for no, the Russians. It's not. Yes, Putin it is. Said, Wait, they're literally Putin, conscripting en masse the Chechens guy, and the, the people Putin, from Siberia. Putin is a multiculturalist like you. He says diversity is the strength of Russia and that 300 ethnic groups are all equally Russian. And then they have these commercials coming out of Russia of like Tajiks and Uzbeks. And they're like, I am Russian. They have these these weird commercials. Coming yes, out. Stalin did the same Putin, thing and he killed yeah, millions of them. Putin is not an ethno-nationalist They're literally all. on He's state TV talking about how Ukraine is a fake ethnicity with a fake country and how he should reestablish yeah, the Ukrainian and, and, and border. And and it's a white white ethnicity they're trying to delegitimize, but then they accept non-white ethnicities into Russia, right? They accept Tajiks and Uzbe Uzbeks are the leading immig immigrants into Russia right now. And so what I'm saying is that if Ukraine had been smart, they would have said to the Russian citizens, look, 
you guys are a danger. You're, you're a fifth column. Maybe you don't all agree with this. Maybe you don't all support Russia, but they have been weaponized by the Kremlin. Just like in Estonia, they're being weaponized by the Kremlin. And so to have them there has caused this huge catastrophe so, for them. Quick question. How does this gel with you claiming they're a multi-ethnic society? Wouldn't that mean Russia would just do the exact same thing to the Ukrainian ethnicity itself, like it's doing right now? You can't simultaneously say that having yeah, Russians in Ukraine was the reason for the invasion, but then also say that Russia has equal divestment in all the ethnic groups that make up its country. Those are contradictory what you, statements. What do, you, what do you mean? That's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying that if Ukraine had decided to be an ethno state, they don't have a war with Russia right now. Uh, I think they would, because How? Russia would still invade. Oh, okay. He could have he could have created some rationale, but the rationale he used, oh. it would have been much weaker because his rationale uh, was I'm as opposed saving, to the strong one that he has right I'm, now. No, I'm not saying it's strong. I'm saying he. The rationale he used was to save these poor Russians right. that were allegedly. We being need genocided. to create ethno states so, so that when dictators decide to invade so, their neighbors, so they have Ukraine, slightly less it, credible excuses it, for doing Ukraine, so. In Ukraine, well, look, Russians in Ukraine, the, the big issue there for years was that these Ukrainians didn't want Russians who they had historical grievance with running their government in a pro Russian manner, right? They wanted I think to they have just Ukrainians governing. They Can we tie this back into problem. demographic shifts in the West? Yeah, all, it, it, all I'm saying, my, the point my broad problem is that this states. is retarded. Um, first of all, ethno states right, are real. There are monoracial states. Um, there are no ethno states because ethnicities are infinitely fracturable. Anytime you have a state with one ethnicity, you will quickly find there is more than one. America, white Americans are not just one ethnicity. People who live, yeah, white people in New York, white people in Florida, white people in California, these are absolutely distinct ethnicities. We don't treat yes, it that way because in I America mean. we fetishize the idea of having kind of like a monoculture, but holy shit, we do not. You know, there are as many differences between whites living in Washington and in Florida as there are between like Tajiks and Uzeks in some parts of Russia. Like it's a whole thing. What I thing. mean by ethno state is race state. I know. Is, well, in America, yes, but in Europe you can have ethno state or at least close to it. And those countries in Europe have divided up based on ethnic differences or religious differences or political differences. And I think that's a good model. I, I don't think mixing all of them together what happens is a good thing. As, 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 as you've seen in Ireland, like if the, if the Northern Irish can't get along with the Southern Irish based over uh, religious and political disputes, why force them together? And Bosch is in a tranny utopia world uh, it's True. a good thing to smush them together and force them to live together, even though they don't want to. And to transition, in, of in, in your In your utopian world, it's good to smush Russians and Ukrainians into the same state, despite the fact that it's led to a brutal war in their country now. It has not led. Even you admitted he would just come up yes. with another excuse for invasion. So no, you, it's no, not no, no. Uh, led no, to. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that he could have done it. Yeah, of course. The extremely uh, credible accusations what, what, what of like NATO his, bio labs with thing? Russian DNA weapons, all of okay, these things so would that, have fallen to the wayside were it you, not you only for the Russian fallen? minority in Ukraine. Do you, do you think do you think the bio labs claim would have would have sufficed? I, to, uh, I, he just did it. None of it sufficed. He just did it. Nobody no, believes. But it, but Everyone it, it condemned was, Russia. He just did it. But it was it was the you genocide realize, claims we, in Donbass that really lit that the fire really did here. nothing. Um, in, uh, and, and, uh, and Hitler claimed you, that he was invading Poland defensively, not, you know that? Okay, but it's it's not just that. I think that there's no separatism in Ukraine I know, Ukraine that's, because, without, that's because you have a simple Russians. and smooth mind. And okay, you think is, that, every, is there, you think is that there all separatism ethnicities in operate as a single Russians? block. Um, is there yes, a there will always be internal problems who? in Ukrainians every country. Ukrainians themselves? Yes! There will so always which, be internal pro wait stop you're me wait stop 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 please 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 this is like stop, hearts of iron four brain stop. please 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 ethnicities are infinitely divisible even so if you which... somehow created a country which contained only one ethnicity there would still be sub fracturing within that group. okay okay whatever but the fact of the matter i know is whatever whatever it's a critical distinct, defeater to your it, argument it, it's it's stupid it's so stupid the i fact agree is that ukraine would not be splitting itself up in half over some what? Some Ukraine new... isn't splitting itself in half. What? 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 There's going to the Ukrainians are going to then split into two different types of Ukrainians or three different types. If we of Ukrainians. if we go by your what premise you that all about? if this is what you're talking about, 
in a society in which we have ethnostates and any time ethnicities exist within another's society, you cause problems, therefore you must split. But ethnicities are infinitely divisible. So if you caused that, you would have an infinitely splitting so? set of countries. How so? How, how is Ukrainian going to split up? What? It's, it's own, how is Ukrainian ethnicity going to split up into different things? What would ethnicities it be? Ethnicities are infinitely divisible. You within keep saying this, but how is this going to happen? Group, within the Ukrainian ethnic group, political and geographic divides can cause distinct political blocks that have separate heritages. And eventually you, that causes schisms that would eventually okay, lead to the think, identification of a new ethnicity. Do you, th do you think that it's, it's more likely or less likely if Ukraine was 100% Ukrainian, that there, that it's more likely now that there would be civil war and unrest versus having no Russians ver versus having Russians there who are obviously distinct from them. There is no civil war. What's more likely? Wait, there's well, no there civil was, war. There, there was, there was a war between Eastern separatists, Russian separatists, and Ukraine. That wasn't a war. Russia backed those separatists. That was a that was a proxy yes. war, not a civil war. Sorry. Okay. Was, okay. That wasn't it, a, a civil proxy war. slash civil war. Whatever. It's the same thing. It, but <laughs> wait, the people in the, the, the Donbass voted the to leave the war? Soviet Union when there was a vote done on Ukrainian independence. People in the Donbass voted like seven, eight out of ten said yes. We want to be part of Ukraine. The Russians yeah. in the Donbass, the ethnically but, Russian but people, you're telling wanted me, to be a part of separate Ukraine. Okay, but you're telling me that there's no genuine Russian sentiment there that wants to break away. I mean, these are people who voted pro-Russian politicians. There are genuine into, white American they, 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 sentiments they, they, who want to break away in they North, voted North Yanukovych. North America. They voted they, The East, if you look at the breakdowns of the voting, the people in the East tend to vote for the pro-Russian parties because they're the Russian ethnic minority. They have yes, ties people to have Russia. disagreements. And so... Okay, okay, but they, so they're they're voting based on their ethnic interest there, right? They think the Russian candidate. Then why or the why do mono ethnic cultures still disagree them. with each other? Be, because there's there's differences there in between the ethnicity and the politics. So wait, even and, in and, a single so, ethnic group, there can still be big political differences. Of course. Okay. So yeah. So in America, like, I mean, there's a civil I don't war in have, Spain, right? So in America. I politically agree with people who don't share my ethnicity and disagree with people who do share my ethnicity. So okay. it's almost like political opinions and ethnicity aren't determinative. And it's possible for people of any ethnic creed to have any set of political disagreements possible. Yeah, it's possible. But I want a state in which white people are the ones having the disagreements and not others. And what if the white people in that white state decide they want to open up immigration because it's economically and civically beneficial? Well, then we will fight against them doing so. So wait, I thought you wanted white people to choose and decide. But white, if white people choose no, and decide to do that. No, I don't want white people that, like you to choose and decide to ruin our country. I don't want. Then this isn't about know, white self-determination, you f***ing coward. It's Jesus about racial self-determination. No you wonder can, you're so you obsessed with guy. saying tranny. You're a f***ing woman need, yourself. This whole time need, you're talking about like white self-interest, you just mean you think yeah, you should be white, right because you think you're being, right. You're not even talking about white people. White, Yes, I am. I'm talking about white people who who have who value their heritage, who value their ethnicity. So people who agree with race, you, your political opinion is that you want to prioritize oh, the yeah. people who already agree with you. That's your only position. It's completely yeah, vacuous. Yeah, that, There's no actual political does. belief here outside. I should be right because I'm right. And that's it. That, that's it's not even about white position. people. If you really believed in that's white self-determination, isn't it? If you really believed in white self-determination, then you would say, um, well, if white people in their own ethnically homogenous society decide that they want to let non-white people in for immigration, then I would agree with that. But you don't believe that no, because you don't I, believe I, in white power. You just believe in your positions. Because I don't think that's good for whites. I don't think it's good for whites to have... So then stop pretending of, of, this of is about Somalians white people. Muslims coming into our country, changing our culture, changing our genetics. Why do you care about genetics? Muslims? Most of them are far to the left and, of you anyway. And, and, and the fact... That, Okay, so the the fact is that I want a white ethno state. You don't want that to happen because you're scared of white people pretending getting together. That it's about and if white people speaking don't for agree white with people me, and just defend your position.
So you would argue against other white societies. I, I didn't say I speak for all white people. You were, you were saying that you were arguing for this, for white self-interest. But now we know it's not white self-interest. Yeah, for white self-interest. It's just for your political beliefs. But you've been it's arguing... It's for white racial so, self-interest. Hold on, wait, wait, wait please, beliefs, please, 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 please. Oh, God. My political beliefs are about white racial self-interest. Okay. That's the, that's the agenda. So what you, you realize what you've done here. I circle back now, I must, to the Tyrone question here, because this is the problem that you keep running into you coward, make an ethical argument for your beliefs that isn't just, well, I think white people should get to choose because you've fallen apart on that on every level. For one, now you're no, saying think, you don't even I, want I white people white to choose. People, Stop, I wait, please, please. You don't even want white people to choose. You want them people. to make your choice for you, which I, I is not letting white people about choose. White people. I think and white second people of all, who care about white people should be able to have an ethno state. And in this second world. of all, and you are making the argument that like what Europe for Europeans, Africa for Africans, and then you're arguing for a white ethno state in South Africa. So all of the supposed like principled arguments yeah, look, you have are just you options. saying over no, and over, two, I'm right because I'm right. There's two options. There's two options for whites in South Africa. They either all leave and go back to Europe, which I would welcome, or they separate. You from don't Africa. have Those are the only any two beliefs. Options. You're a Africa mental midget. Africans. You're a toddler. Af you don't believe in anything. Vosh, Vosh, let him respond. Africa for Africans means that mo the vast majority of African countries are for Africans. If they, will, if there's a little sliver on the bottom there for the what six, seven million white people, I don't think that's a big deal. If they don't want it, they're fine. We'll, we'll bring them to Europe. I have no issue with that whatsoever. I'm not advocating for every single white person in the world who doesn't agree with me. Doesn't accept my views they can have a multiracial state you can have a multiracial state somewhere i Yay. don't think every country in the world should be one thing right brazil is a multiracial state fine but i think there should be some racial states for people who want to preserve their race and culture and so on I don't oh, see keep what's that wrong shit with out that. keep that un-american shit out of my country you fucking canuck um I just the problem at the end well, of the day, have... none of these arguments make sense unless you're already terrified of Jews and black people. If you actually get round or down to the meat of it, like the world is richer in so many ways that relate to immigration and in so many of the ways in which it's worse, it has more to do with capitalism than anything. But capitalism would persist if we got rid of non-white immigration. You know, all these problems, you think white, sl oh yeah, like white slums wouldn't exist. No, capitalism, alienation, capitalism. You don't like cultural imperialism? Who sets a Starbucks and a McDonald's in every country on earth? Is it the trannies? No, it's fucking hedge funds. It's fucking Starbucks big business Starbucks supports owners. you. Starbucks supports you. Starbucks, Starbucks Starbucks, Starbucks is a multi-billion dollar Starbucks corporation. If you have politics. a problem with it, corporations love your politics. All wait, the corporations yeah, they are wait. Woke. They like capitalist politics, or sorry, they uh, like okay, a socialist they, politics. They, no, they. they so when love I want them nationalized, your, your that's that's views. they like that. No, they love your social views. They love your BLM positions. Yeah, every yeah, your the majority of people positions. in America do. All yeah, your, they're right all your to crazy positions mm -hmm. that you have. They're good. They're good on coffee and they're good on social progressivism it. and they're bad so on capitalism. Wanted, all you, all you Listen, do is again, nationalize he Starbucks. whines. That's Listen, your, that's all the big corpos agree with you when you think human yeah, rights they, they are valid. Yeah, they, they cry agree, about it. Most people agree with me on this. White people. So most people agree with you, but Trump won the election. Yes. And, and, and in Sweden, in Sweden, wait, Sweden there's, wait, there's literally, the election, there's Maloney, literally, wait, do you want to like Maloney look at polling the on these issues? In Italy? Wait, Maloney have you ever looked in, at in polling Italy? on these issues? In, Pol in Poland, a polling, right government exists. Polling. Yeah, I understand what you're on saying. On these I'm issues, out, like the way you find out what populations believe. Polling. Yeah, I know have what you're Have you ever looked saying. at that? Yeah, I've looked at polling. Okay, what have polling you seen how they feel about the transes or about racial equality or miscegenation? I gotta tell you, yeah, Starbucks and the rest of most yeah, so, Western so Europe. So you're, you're just appealing to what? Popular sentiment? No, now? I can make ethical arguments. I'm trying to make ones you'll so understand. So you're trying to tell you're trying to tell me that because more people you're the one who just you, randomly so brought right, up Starbucks political position? views. I didn't bring those up. I was just saying that the reason why the world is homogenizing is because of capital interest. Okay, so in your your solution to that is to continue doing that. I mean, what, no, what, what it has do you nothing want? to do with immigration. Immigration actually makes the world more unique and vibrant and interesting. Most of the well, interesting well, shit that you can find. Corporations like immigration; they they all support it too, right? So, okay, let so me see. Okay, let me try. Them, let me peel this apart and see if you can that. understand this with your white IQ. This should be easy, okay? So, 
corporations like immigration. I like immigration, but corporations like also like capitalism. I don't like capitalism. So I Why agree with like them on one thing, but I disagree on another. You see, Why there are like separate issues. Do you understand? But why do they like immigration? Because immigration is economically efficient for all of us. It's literally better for all of us. The data shows this. Well, maybe because they want some um, non-white workers to they like be labor. Baristas. Well, they like labor because it's a, yeah. a resource that they can use well, to there, produce commodities. Well, that's funny because there was a. You know, they like you, stuff you that makes the economy. So much, Let me try this. When and, uh, economy what, grow wasn't big, corpo happy. One at a time. One at a time. There was a, I'm trying there, to explain this to you. There was when a study corpo that showed happy, big guy. Huh? There was a study that showed study. that uh, that that companies it was it was Whole Foods actually that if their their working staff was more racially or ethnically diverse. I know the study, and you're running right were, into a trap. Uh, Please continue. They were they were less sorry they were they were they were more likely to unionize if they were uh, racially diverse or sorry racially homogenous, right? Mm -hmm. So you're you're saying that you love you hate capitalism. So I guess I, I don't know what point you're trying to make right now, but I'm here to drop the red pills, baby. That study which yeah. I read, thank you, uh, showed that yes. It is uh, less likely to form a union in businesses that have a racially diverse workplace. But then more research was done okay, in the same so, study. Uh, it, so hold on, wait. In the same study, it was found that actually non-white people were far more likely to push for unionization than white people who are naturally cuckolded. That's why they like the porn they do. The reason why it was less likely a union would form in a racially diverse workplace was because racist white people were so unwilling to work with their racially diverse co-workers that it f***ed over okay. all of them. It's Another indication of the low IQ again, eh? Yeah, no, that was the result found in the so, study so, you just so brought the up. Study, the Did study you know that racism racist correlates with a lower IQ? That's also so you're, studies you're to show me that. that the study says racist white, that the, the fault is racist white people don't want to unionize with non-white people. So yes, non-white people are more likely to be pro-union and push for unionization, but the obstacle in diverse no, no workplaces, wonder, because no diverse workplaces... So that's probably why you want It is true. The fact that non-white right? people are more likely to unionize is pretty that's cool it. of them. I think so that's it. Right? You realize your so, study is so, disproving so now, your point here. You, so once so again, we must contend a, with a the fact motivation. that your low IQ ideology is so, fucking so over now, your own people. So now, so now the you white people have just admitted a racial motivation to bring these so people wait, in. The to, white to suit people, your, your anti, your anti -corp, corporate <laughs> needs, but then you love corporations. Oh yeah, I'm so bad for wanting you. white people to get in unions so they could fight for higher wages. I apologize. Castigate me for my crimes. No, it is literally, and this is what happened back in the turn so this, of the 20th so the century. Said, Wait, Andrew, is it possible that I could get X. him to let me talk for like a minute because he well, doesn't? Both, both. So if you want to do that, that's fine. And I even think in the last part of this, maybe we should try to order that just a little bit. But you guys have both been interrupting the hell out of each other. Just well, I say on. stuff of value, so there's meaningfully a difference. Yeah, yeah. But well, I understand whether, the confusion. Whether, whether you think so or not, two seconds. well, whether this you think so or not, the the debate. Both of you guys have been very guilty of it. If you want a minute, fine. Yeah, because him, that's but, what he wants. I mean, he doesn't want to have a two minute well, well, thing because he wants to be. Able Brandon, to he just said he wanted to do one minute response. Oh no, I just. Oh no, I didn't want him to. I wanted to because he can learn something <laughs> from this. At the turn of the 20th century, one of the biggest obstacles to unionization was racism in the workplace. Yes, there were lots of racist white people in like 1910, believe it or not, because, um, uh, 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 you know, um, robber barons would like basically try to sow racism between white and non-white workers to say, you don't want a union with the black people in it. That's not cool. You're white. You shouldn't be in there. But a union with only white people doesn't work because black people will just keep working if they try to do a strike. The same problem happens today. Racial antagonism is cultivated by the economic elite, which in this case, not Jews, I know that's what you think when you hear that, but in this case, it's just plain old corporate owners because it makes it more difficult to form worker solidarity. So yes, as shown by the fact that studies indicate racism is literally a low IQ trait, so, it so them over. To solve this, So to solve this racism issue that you're so concerned about, how about we just separate the races? That's a very Why not just easy separate solution. the racists? Uh, that, that's an easy solution. Okay, fine. Separate the racists. So the racists, okay, go. Go. We, we can have. 
but you said you would try to do sanctions against us and you would try yeah, to oh, undermine sure. us. Oh, so, it'll suck for so, you, but you should so try it. So we anyway. go and do, we, we have self-determination and then in comes Bosch saying that we can't have it because we're racist and he disagrees with us. Just go settle like Antarctica or something. It's white like you. You can go with all your buddies. Okay, there are okay, no so... black people in Antarctica. It's it's not, it's totally free of them. The Nazis tried to claim Antarctica, yeah, and, you know? and if we and if we did that, Vosh would send his transgender army to try to kill I us, promise I will let you do whatever you want in Antarctica. If you can survive the winters, you deserve to have your ethno state. All right, All gentlemen, right. we're gonna move. I have on. to. I have to go in like ten minutes or so. So. Oh, we gotta run then. Oh goodness. You're not gonna. You're not gonna do sit you, around. There's a lot of super chats here. I'll for sit you. around for the questions. I mean, you, you could. You could do a couple super chats. Yeah, but callers and that. That's gonna take too long. Okay. Well, uh, do you want to move into your closing statements, Brandon? Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so I, I basically laid out at the beginning here that um, we are under attack as white people, right? I mean, I could give a million examples of that. There's open hatred of white people on the media, right? You have uh, Don Lemon and, and uh, Anderson Cooper saying it's an exciting transformation that the country is becoming uh, minority white. Uh, you have people like... Um, there's another guy on CNN that said even liberal white people are inherently racist. And this is, seems to be the latest logic of the radical left is that even, even left-wing white people, even liberal white people are still inherently racist by not showing enough deference. By being, being colorblind now is not good enough. You have to be actively against white people. You have to be actively advocating for privileges to be given to non-white people. This is the latest thing. And CBC recently did a documentary called Deconstructing Karen, where they had these two brown women harangooing white liberal women, many of whom are in mixed race relationships. And they said, well, you being in a mixed relationship does not mean you're not racist. You're still racist because you're white. And so basically the kind of end conclusion to all of this logic is it's a crime to be white. To be white is the problem. Right? They're starting to talk about whiteness as a virus, a cancer. We're seeing this in academia. A guy called Donald Moss says that, that the white race and white, whiteness itself is a virus. Um, we've had people give speeches at Yale saying that they fantasize about shooting white people in the head and stuff like this. And so it, it, it's obviously the case that the, the, the more white people become minority, in the country, the more harm is going to be done to us. Just as the Jewish activists say that the threat uh, of harm to, to them exists when white people are a majority. And so it's my view that the only solution to the racial problem is to separate, is to have different states for different people. I think the Russian example is a, a perfect example of the danger of having people in your country who aren't loyal to your nation, aren't loyal to your people, who could potentially betray it, even in a war, and sell you sell you down the river. And so these are perfect examples of why diversity is not a strength, it's a weakness, and um, these people are out to get us. These, these evil elites are out to kill white people and make us extinct. And Vosh agrees with them. Vosh loves it. Oh, all right, Vosh, go ahead with your closing. Look, there are real problems that real people experience, and the problem that I have is that this is just some whiny bitch baby shit. It just is. I can't take it seriously because it's not serious. He spent the entire time arguing that his basic belief was that white people should have a political system where they can advocate for their own interests, and then, oh wait, not actually for their own interests, just for the interests he agrees with. Which means he's not actually advocating for white self-determination, he's just arguing for his position and refusing to give an ethical argument for it. The whole time I ask, and he cannot provide me, why is it good for these things? Well, he goes back to, well, they should have a space to speak for themselves, they should be able to exist, whatever. But then it turns out this is not even the case. He would still want to prescribe the views of these people, even whites who disagreed with them. There's no escaping it, it's just, it's, it's intellectually vacuous. Um, if you if you are like a grieving man child who is terrified of the world, every time you see somebody with horn rimmed glasses or like a Yale professor say something cringy and you imagine you are the victim of some international conspiracy to eradicate you, when white people are still by and far the leaders of the most powerful political and economic systems in the world overwhelmingly, this speaks to a kind of cowardice that I just have no respect for. I mean, 
What do you even say to a belief such as that? What are we arguing about here? No statistics on economic attainment, positions in relative places of corporate power, uh, who controls the government, who controls the military, how many white people are in Congress, how many white people are governors, this, that, the other. No. Instead, we go to, what, a, Gil a Gillette advertisement? Like, oh, white people under attack. Look, this corporation got some money by farming right-wing outrage. It's ridiculous. If you care about the well-being of white people, then look at what actually affects them. Look at what affects white people. Income inequality affects white people. Inflation affects white people. Poor city design and structure. Alienation from the workplace. The fact that we don't have worker representation in the places where we contribute to our societies. The fact that uh, so much of living in the world today is buying cheap bullshit made in China and having no real connection to the people around you. This is stuff that actually affects people's lives. The problem is that it affects everyone's lives. And to care about it, you can't just care about white people. You have to care about people. That's why this man's pro-white politics are all actually anti-non-white politics. What would you do to help white people, he is asked? Oh, I would close immigration. Oh, what the f*** would that do? That would worsen a lot of problems for white people. Like immediately, our economy is dependent upon immigration. That would cause massive hikes in the costs of many goods. But of course, it's not really about helping them, right? It's about keeping scary Tyrone away. I have no respect for these positions. I think they're incredibly silly, and I do genuinely hope people bought into them understand that there are better ways, better ways to improve the world, um, ways that will actually affect them. Thanks for that closing, Vosh. I'm going to move right into Super Chats. We have quite a few of them. Uh, just so that you understand, we consider the debate to be, at this point, closed. However, that doesn't mean the debaters can't still interact with each other, or um, they may, may still argue over some of the things that the Super Chats say. That's fine with me. For £10 pounds from Juzori, he says, Martinez, do you consider the Irish and Italians white, or are you using the based originalist definition of the word that excludes them? Yeah, I consider white to be of European descent. So that okay. includes Irish, Italians, Russians, the Turks, uh, Balkans. N no, uh, we, we we cut it off at uh, Southern Europe, Balkans, somewhere around there. Okay, sorry, Elrond. He said he couldn't take callers today. Uh, Zoltanius asked for ten dollars. I'm just gonna say. The white farmers are killed today, even when there's no conflict going on in South Africa with blacks. They chant, kill the boar. Uh, that was a question to uh, you, Vosh. Oh, there's a ton of racial antagonism in South Africa. I can only imagine why. Um, yeah, obviously, if you, uh, you know, rule through racial apartheid, a colonized area for 300 years or so, there's going to be massive social problems when that uh, ends. The problem is the same people who ruled over the blacks are the same ones who now say, oh, well, now we can never get along. That's because um, the relationship between white and black people to a racist must be one of either total domination or absolute non-existence. They prevent any possibility of coexistence and then blame others for their failings. So uh, let me just comment on that. So that uh, that phrase, kill the boar, um, is regularly chanted by Julius Malema, who's one of the leading politicians there. And he's made numerous comments where he threatened genocide against white people. He says, we're, he's like hinting at it where he says, we're not going to kill them yet, but I can't guarantee anything. But in South Africa, of course, if you make an anti-black comment, you go to prison for hate speech. But Julius Malema, actually, they ruled in a court recently that it's not hate speech to say kill the boar. So that basically tells you the uh, trajectory of that country, that the white people are probably going to be genocided at but some But they love point free speech. So it's OK to so the hate speech laws say it's OK to say kill the boar, but you can't say anything criti critical of black people. Um, I think you can say stuff critical of black people there. No, they've, they've arrested white people who have said if you, the N-word and stuff even, like that. If you even say, I don't like this guy, and you point at a black guy there, they arrest you immediately. So in South Africa, you can hint at genocide of whites, and you don't get arrested. And, and in the court rules that it's okay, but if you're a white person and you say, I don't like black people, you will get charged. Will you? Isn't that an apartheid? Will, will, will you or get charged? If to... you say, I don't like black people in South Africa as a white person, will you get charged? Yeah, probably, yeah. Pro oh, probably. Oh, are we just making I mean, this do, up completely? Do, do, do are know... we imagining there, hypocrisy? There have been, there conjuring have this been, entirely from your mind? Been, there have been cases of white people getting charged with hate speech. 
in South Africa wait, for but saying the, stuff but, like that. Wait, but the black guy got charged <clears throat> with hate speech. You just said he was exonerated. He was charged Which as well. black guy? The, the guy who you said killed a boar. He was charged with hate speech. They've both been charged then. No, Where was they, the arrest? They were, they, were, they were arguing about whether this phrase, kill the boar, is hate speech. I don't think he was charged specifically. But you said he was. They, wait, you they, said a court found they, that it was. So he was charged. Okay, it was his party or whatever. Oh but my they, god, dude! Someone, You're just not. Nah, come on, filed, Andrew, move on. Someone, he doesn't know someone anything. Someone filed a complaint, and and they and the, and the court found that it's actually not hate speech to, to say uh, kill white people. Let me get on to the next super chat. Uh, this one's from Curtis for five Canadian dollars. He says white people still have rights and property in South Africa. Jesus. Yes. Um, they Red Scare for $5 says class is more relevant than race. Uh, whites have 99% more in common with my Southeast Asian and Latino neighbors than Elon Musk. Any comment? Oh, I that? fully I, I fully agree. No, um, a I, lot, I, I don't a, think so. One, well, yeah, of course, because you're retarded. Um, yeah, overwhelmingly people's lives are dictated by their environments and by what they can do, their material attainment. A Latin and a white person together living in the same shit neighborhood with poor wages are both going to have very similar lives. Um, the white person will not have more in common with like fucking Elon Musk, a white immigrant South African billionaire from apartheid. Like, I don't even know what the f that guy's life is like drinking blood, fucking children. I have no idea. Like, the, the idea that people like, oh, yeah, well, all races basically have the same life experience. It's just ridiculous. So then why is BLM not aligning themselves with poor white people? Why are they a racial organization? Why do these black Did activists... Did you ever go to a BLM protest? Why, why do these black activists um, sympathize with their racial brethren above class? I mean, that seems to be the wait, thing. They do, wait, the BLM movement had a fuck ton of white people who participated. And additionally, a ton of the prescribed legislation by BLM activists were about remending police misbehavior in all cases. After the first couple of days, so, after the protests began, there was actually a ton of talk about like, hey, just because George Floyd got like killed, it could happen to any of us. Like white people get so gunned what, down by the cops too. Why I heard is that it then when, black why is it then white people, why is it they never talk about the white cases though? They didn't, they didn't talk about they any do. white cases. There when, was a when ton of talk were, of cops when gunning down on the unarmed white people. When they're up on the pulpit, it's all about uh, Floyd and, and Trayvon Martin, who was killed well, by a Hispanic those guy. those were the big prominent cases, but they talked yeah, the about a ton. They, what about that autistic kid that got killed at one of those house raids after somebody called the cops? What about that guy, the uh, Simon Says cop, who, who got him out of an apartment uh, door into a hallway and told him to like, get on his ground? No, you don't know what you're talking about. All this is, happened. Yeah, you never paid heard, attention. I haven't heard any BLM people talk about I know, because you don't case. listen to them. You what, just what listen they, to Stormfront. What, what, you, you don't you know. You have no clue. You had a private Discord conversation with one of these people. I'm talking about publicly. I'm talking about them I'm talking publicly. I'm what talking, protests, I went to what, the protests. What, prote what protests have they done for a white victim of- The protests were against police brutality. You don't know anything. They were talking about white victims. Brutality in general. But when there's a white, when there's a case where a white person is killed for racial reasons- Do, do you see everything that. that he says is a whataboutism? They, they, it's they like, well, what about the poor that. white person? These do, do they protests- protest? were about so, police brutality and white so, victims of police brutality were brought up plenty. I talked about them with activists directly and I saw it brought up on national news. You don't know this because BLM, you get your info from poll. BLM is a racial activist organization. Oh There's no point in talking okay. to him. He, like, he doesn't know they any of this. Exist. He, he heard they of something called to, a South Africa once and he has to, very let strong him, let opinions. Let him finish his point here. They exist to, to advocate the next for chat. racial privileging of Africans. They exist to what? abolish the police so that africans can continue to commit crimes and not and, and not be punished for it of course that's the what funny it, thing is, is if you they, actually they want, they if want you the OJ actually Simpson trial if you actually again, cared right? at all they, about white people you would be in favor white because people. cops do gun down innocent white people they can as well. kill white people like oj simpson and the, what the, the all fuck black are we jury, talking the, about the, the oj simpson jury, for the all black jury will acquit that person because he's black what the fuck are we talking about right now this is he's like he's heard of something called a south africa once and he he's got stories to tell you now He's heard about a BLM once and he's got 
where an to all tell. black jury will acquit a black man for revenge for Rodney King. That's what a black jury What are we talking about? Simpson I thought trial. we were talking about BLM. Yeah, BLM can, wasn't you, about you OJ Simpson. You want, Bosch. This is an example of black of what? in-group preference. We're not talking about, we're talking about BLM. Black in-group preference. And oh you don't my want God. to hear about black in-group preference because you support black in-group preference because you're anti-white. See, this is, again, if the explicitly pro-white position would be to support BLM because they were only advocating for um, restraints on police behavior and violence, which would protect white people as well. But if you hate well, we black people more than you love white people, you have to fight against BLM. We need, we need because restraints you would, on you black You would rather violence. innocent white okay. people get shot as long as you make sure twice as many innocent black people get shot. That's your politics. Let me you know, move on. Yeah, let, me, let me move on to these next super chats, or we, or we won't be able to get through them. Um, Vosh believes in magic dirt, so he's not able to follow the conversation, says Tim Zimlick. Uh, Zayton, this is probably a dog whistle, but I don't know it. Uh, well, well, yeah. Uh, Zayton for ten dollars says, "Ask Mar Martinez why no racial tension in Botswana or Zambia. Zambia had a white president in twenty fourteen. Seems like people like Martinez are the ones causing the racial tensions. He's so worried about." I'm not familiar with Zambia. That's in Southern Africa, I guess. He hasn't and had a dream of a, it yet. There's a, um, there's a white. Uh, as far as I know, it's, it's a, um, it's a, it's a white majority country, or is it a black majority? I, I don't, I don't know anything <laughs> wait, about it. Wait, just say either one randomly, and he'll come up with a narrative on the spot. Um, I have, I have no idea. Um, yeah, and I'm sure there is racial tensions there. There probably is. How do we know that there's not? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't even need one. It's just like he, somebody we, makes a point through a donut, and he's like, "Um, well, there's probably racism. I don't know. You know, there's pro yeah, there maybe probably, there, probably there might is, be." Vosh. How do you know? Do you, do you know that there's not? There's racial tension in every country on earth. Um, so the, the, the super chat was there's none, and then I'm supposed to just take it at face value. Is what you're saying? That's how you get most of your info. So I don't know. Uh, so, uh, Azeus for 20 Canadian dollars says nothing. Those are my favorite kinds of super chats. Oh, same. For $20, Zoltania says, Bosch, so Mussolini supported worker cooperatives such as Lega Nationale and the myth of Man Mondragon by Sharon Kashmir talks about it. Carl Theodore Schmidt, an anti-fascist scholar, even admits fascist Italy had many co-ops. Um, sure. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly where he's going with that. Franco uh, Spain had a co-op called Mondragon, right? Yeah, uh, they, it, they also. Mean, I, I, I find it funny that you're, you're anti-fascist. Also... Uh, but, um, wait, but but fascism. but Hitler drank water, right? Curious. No, no, no. Fascism. Mussolini was a Marxist when he, uh, of course, first started. Yes, and, and and he and he had relations with the. I mean, that that's you're going to make criticism. your audience of that's Nazis mad if you keep criticizing that's a criticism your heroes. I would have of Mussolini is that he. He was um, pro-Soviet for a long time. He had trade relations with them. He had a lot well, of relations Well, the Soviets were also fascist, so and, I don't and really he, care about uh, I mean, Mussolini's economy was pretty similar to the Soviets, 75% uh, nationalized. So why do you hate fascists if you're such a big socialist, right? You would love them. What point do you think you're making? I'm making the point that you call yourself anti-fascist, yet fascists are basically socialists. Ah, I see. <laughs> This, uh, this from the incredible marble brain takes of um, what is Zambia? So fascists are socialists. Fa uh, well, you actually, love them, right? fascism and social. Wait, are you a big capital? Wait, are you a big capitalist? Are you a big fan of international conglomerates running the show? No, I'm. I'm for a national state that has a mixed economy. How about a that? A mixed economy. Yeah. Well, I like. So I like this question. I have never heard this phrase, and I actually kind of want to hear the answer, Vosh. Should ethnic foods retain their exclusive national identity and history, and why? No. Um, cultures change all the time. There is no authentic ethnic food because the authentic ethnic food was made like 12 trillion years ago by a guy whose tools were a rock and like a bucket full of wheat, you know? Um, I, don't, I don't strive for um, authenticity in this fashion because uh, art you know, art and food, they're, they're, they're you know, uh, constantly evolving mediums of expression. Uh, as long as the food's tasty, right? Uh, Azius, for another 20 Canadian dollars, says, both these guys are awful, but Vosh is a little more awful. Okay. Sure. Zoltanius, for $5, says, Vosh, ask Martinez what he thinks about Alexander Dugan. Why? Wait, why, why can't you ask him? 
I, I think Dugan. That. I think Dugan is is evil. He he wants to erase a white European ethnic group from history from the map, just as Vosh wants to wipe the entire white race from the map. So I think they're pretty much on par with each other. Uh, for five dollars, Red Scare asks Starbucks and other multinational corporations practice, and he's calling this rainbow capitalism. Leftists are not impressed by so-called wokeness. Well, yeah, cor corporations' only interest is making money. If appealing to things the public is interested in makes them more money, then they will. People think this is like some sinister political ploy. It's very basic capitalism. Corporations have been doing this for why, literally as long as Why does as it make them more money to appeal to two per, like what what's the population of transgenders? Because in the most world? people are supportive of progressive causes. It makes them more money. Okay, so what, it's that if, it's that so, simple. It's that simple. So you you have stats that say that over fifty percent of the country support transgenderism. Yeah. What what what's that Pew? Hold on. It okay. depends on the um, way the question is phrased, but I've seen it go up as high as the uh, mid to high 60s, and I've seen it hover around 50, really depending. Hold on. Uh, question. Most favor protecting trans people from discrimination, even as growing shares say gender is determined by sex at birth. 64% strongly favor or favor. So two-thirds of America, according to this poll from June 28, 2022, are in support of protecting trans people from discrimination, which seems to me like a fairly strong, um, you know, a, a, a but you, do, fairly do you strong think it indication. might be a little bit weird that corporations are promoting critical race theory, anti-white critical race theory, and are doing these things publicly? I haven't seen that and, in the Starbucks uh, window in a while. Where? Okay, okay well, it's come out that uh, many of these companies are promoting critical race theory Where? internally. Internally. Yeah, of course. Obviously. The people who run these companies are always looking for ways to spend their money in ways that they think will immunize them against future social problems. That's why the Me Too movement was supported by companies that had horrendous so interior... It... Wait, I'm explaining to you. You can learn. So a lot of these companies are run by white people who are kind of liberal, but have no fucking idea how many Jewish of these problems people? were. Uh, yeah, some of them are Jewish. Um, yeah. And uh, what they do is they listen to consulting agencies explain to them how they should receive half a million dollars for them to get the super cool, top notch, top secret, extra educational bit to show to their employees. So it seems it's the exact same that. reason that back in the 1980s, you had a lot of these like um, yoga power bomb classes in corporate workplaces where it was like, we can get everyone together if we all do like Zamba together and they were all doing the stretches. It's just um, the managerial class. It seems a bit class. strange to me that these corporations are embracing things like transgenderism and uh, Well, feminism. a lot of stuff like, must seem strange Gillette, to you because you have the brain Gillette, of a fish. G oh, Gillette God, I brought up Gillette earlier. Oh, Gillette, no. Embracing feminism, yet they're selling razors to men like that doesn't and why their sense. stock fact, prices go up it, after that well i i seen stories saying that they lost uh, billions of dollars because of that seen stories yeah it was in breitbart that they, they in lost breitbart oh oh so if breitbart reports it it's not true is that oftentimes how yes that is actually how it oh, works right, but huff post is always correct no more so than breitbart though Right. Um, so when it agrees with you, it's correct. No, when it's correct, it's correct. Um, I mean, you can look at it wasn't just bright. It was, it was a bunch of different places. Like Nike's uh, um, Nike's stock went up after the uh, Kaepernick thing as well. What you're so what you're not understanding right now is it so really is as a... simple as these. Wait, hold on. Wait, a Andrew, I can't because wait, no, Andrew, Andrew, please. I feel on, like I'm being dragged hold into hold a on. toilet right now. Like this guy's retard brain. This is so simple. Corporations will appeal to the public interest to get more money. They will do stuff that's controversial to get more money. They've been doing this for as long as corporations have existed. Well, you guys are on the same it's team, then. not new. It's not special. You're on the same team. Why? When it comes to supporting trans people, I am. Oh, okay, you are. So you're with yeah. the corporate. Yeah, I'm with the pro corporate trans you're lobby. Corporate stooge. Yeah, you're corporate stooge, big yeah, guy. for trade. Yeah, you're not a socialist. And did, did you know that? Um, Jeff Bezos drinks water, and I drink water. Yeah, Jeff Bezos, Bezos Vosh Coalition. Bezos supports the fifteen dollar minimum wage, doesn't he? I you don't support a fifteen dollar an hour. No. So you don't support that? No, I want like twenty five an hour now. Fifteen an hour. Twenty five an hour, right? You don't make enough. You don't make Absolutely. enough on Twitch. Right? One million an hour. <laughs> um, you don't make enough. 
pandering to zoo files on Twitch. First of all, I'm on YouTube. Second of all, I make far more than 25 an hour. Um, I'm not the one in yeah, need you, of subsidization you're, you're appealing... here, okay? I'm out here helping all the transes, uh, zoo, zoo feeling trans, whatever, with the $25 right. an hour minimum you're wage, trying, the anti-Bezos yeah, ticket. The, um, you're trying to win over the pedophile demographic lately, I heard. No, I've actually been going against conservatives lately. So right. for twenty dollars, wake up. Uh, Storm says an institute for family studies poll in twenty eighteen said that twenty four million Americans have alt right views. Bosch's cultural liberalism, propped up by the elites in international finance, isn't as popular as he thinks it is. Twenty four million is like less than a fourteenth of the population. What? Wait, twenty four million? That'd be one twelfth of the pop. What? Wait, what? Wait, is he seriously trying to argue that my views are less popular than his by citing a number of people smaller than the number of people who voted for Joe Biden by a, by a multiple well, factor? Okay. So, so when these smartest when these Nazi. Views, All right. So, so when these views become mainstream and popular, mm -hmm. you're telling me that the corporations will become pro-white overnight? They'll become anti-trans yeah. overnight? Yeah, look at what happened in Germany. The Weimar Republic was very socially progressive, and then when Nazi Germany rolled around, they kicked the Jews out of their corporate boards, and kablamo. They're making uh, Nazi cars yeah. and Nazi uniforms Yeah, because so they on. were totally under the domination of the regime. They couldn't do why, otherwise. Why do you... You're, white people are so weak in your world. Just a couple of Jewish people are just standing around and you're screaming Hitler and crying about Hitler them. Hitler controlled them. Did, did Jews make you wet your bed until you were in eighth grade? Like, Jesus. Like, everything with you. Always. No agency for the white. It's insane. What like you, you have no. About? You don't care what about white people at all. It's like, well, it must be some other operative force. So, we are so the leading group is in the strongest country to have ever existed. We control NATO. Yeah, we could block out the sun. We could end the world. The, the transgenders. Well, stop. If you're so Rachel obsessed Levine with them, gonna, then Rachel cut Levine's your dick off the and, and join America them. Again, isn't your she, obsession right? from afar is weird. Wait, if you had it, if you had Why do you way, keep bringing up trans people? What? It's like every way. time we have a subject, he just runs down this dialogue tree because his brain isn't capable of way, running at more than a quarter horsepower. If you had uh, your way, what about and Jeff and Bezos would be running horse the military. dog military? Like, it doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about. What was the last point that was being made? Andrew, remind me, what was the super chat? Uh, the super chat was talking about this institute poll, which institute said that poll. 24 million people have alt-right views. Gotcha, which, which is smaller uh, than the number of people who don't have them. I'm not sure what the point is. Didn't Martinez said that he have to go sometime soon, or uh, did this end up yeah, being more exciting yeah. for him than he thought? How many how many chats do we have? Uh, we still got just a couple more to go through. If you guys don't mind sticking right. around for them, um, Vosh or Martinez, can you drop a twenty three and Me test? <laughs> I've done it. Yeah, I've done a DNA test. Okay. What did it show? Ninety eight percent European. What kind of European? Uh, Spanish and Czech. What about the uh, pro Aryan Nazis? Yeah, they, they can have. I'm fine with them. They can, they can have a Northern European ethno state. I don't think they just that. want Northern Europe. I think they want all of it. No, I don't think so. Oh, re oh yeah, no. The, the famously peaceful pro Aryan so Nazis. Well, didn't Hitler <laughs> align himself with Franco, the Spanish leader? Oh, what happened to the other uh, guy that he aligned with whose borders he ended up sharing after they conquered Poland? Hmm, maybe he would have turned on the rest of them, too. Mm. Okay, maybe, maybe this, maybe Maybe that. fascism so is inherently warlike, you know, if you think about it. But maybe communism is inherently warlike, too, right? Didn't uh, Stalin do a lot of invasions and Stalin was a fascist, I don't claim him. Yeah, okay, and he's not a real communist. No, he was a sure. communist. He no. was a pure communist. Well, you think fascism and communism he, are the same. He, he, he was a pure communist. We're he doing the, the thing purest, again. Andrew, we'll never get through the super chats. We're never economy, getting through. He? Ah! he had exactly almost, what you wanted. Well, we're almost exactly done. exactly what you wanted. The purest command economy that you can get. That was I hate Soviet command Union. economies. I've opposed you them don't? for my on my channel for the whole time I've had a channel. Uh, Tim, you want to create one. Tim for five dollars <laughs> okay. says people like Vosh are the reason some people say white people have no culture. Um, um, okay. Sure. If you want to send me five dollars, do you not to... see my Warhammer figurines behind me? Uh, come on. <laughs> uh, let me just make sure I didn't miss anything here. Uh, 
Do do do. Only Vosh can make me agree with ethno states, said Red, Red Scare. Another uh, example of the cowards of these people who can never simply believe something but must always be cajoled. Oh, I didn't want to do this, but BLM made me do it. Oh, I didn't want to believe this, but the Jews are trying to de destroy us. Oh, I didn't want to agree with this man, but then Vosh making better arguments intimidated me with well, his Jews, body blah. Well, Jews, are some Jews say what they want to do, and, and you agree with them. So let's not pretend that some Jews you're, drink water. you're even denying that this is true. So how is that an argument against what I'm saying? Some Jews I say... Well, some Jews I, it, say that are you they seriously want making the argument you've agreed the with a up. Jew before? Some Jews oh, say, he's snapping. He's snapping. Um, have you, you, have, aren't you, aren't have you, you ever agreed with anything that, a Jew uh, has said? That child pornography should be legal, sir? No, I don't think so. I'm not yeah, a fan of Matt Walsh or Nick or Fuentes. Three times, you're, you're, you're on record two or three times saying that child pornography should be legal and that you masturbate to zoo files. I know what it is. You were researching for this debate and you, you and had in your shit, search bar Mr. child pornography Mr. already typed up. And then instead of deleting it Mr. and replacing it with Vosh, you typed in child Ooh, pornography Vosh I think, I think and you got it mixed like the up most in your head. the infamous thing that you're known for, isn't it? Well, probably with people like you, because again, it overlaps with your sexual not just proclivities. Me. Not just me. I think well, a lot of people, even no, on your No, your particular though. interests. I, uh, I, I agree. But I'm not here to give you an argument for child pornography. I'm not here to defend your predilections. Wait, you've already made that point. You've already made that argument wait, you Wait, so you already agree? You believe? Wait, are you pro-child pornography? No, you are. I Oh, wait. No, I'm not. You were just saying that you'd already you heard you're the argument for child pornography. You're, you're on record saying that you are. I guess it you, is. You it is remarkable to me how generally when I have conversations with I people who clip. aren't that bright, they tend to end in, in this the where they're just Vosh. like, um, take a seat, sir. You have some explaining to do, big guy. The, this is like, do you think this is like a gotcha that like you think you that got, you heard an argument gotcha. in you, favor of child got, pornography? You got yourself. I mean, it's on. It's on record. It's interesting how guys, every time we talk, uh, we run down some like talking point, this guy finds something else to talk about, but it's always like a, a vortex to the bottom where at the end they're like shitting themselves and scooping piles of shit and like eating it and blubbering like, you're a pedo, you're a pedo. When like in reality, I'm as anti-pedo as they get. I'm not conservative. I don't fantasize about impregnating a 15 year old like white trad wife that I can live in a cornfield with. I don't uh, go on 4chan where 90% of the pornography is like lolly bait or like racial cuckold porn. And I'm not a cuck like this guy who sat here so and took two hours of direct Fortune, insults right? and only at the end decided to nut up you and must, talk to me. You must, you must be all over 4chan then, right? <laughs> that's your, wait, that's your retort. You, m m m m you like it. Well, Man. I only got, I only got two more here. Get out of here. Um, so this one says, um, Vosh should charge this guy for all the free education. That from damn Samo Flange. Nah, I failed him. He didn't learn shit. And then the last one is, Vosh, will you stop running and debate Rob Nor 1v1? Rob? Didn't I debate Rob Nor? You have not debated Rob Nor. Wait, wait, I've talked to Rob Nor, haven't I? I guess they want a 1v1 debate. Have I not directly? Oh, but he's such a buff... Mm, maybe. I'll think about it. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you want to go ahead and shout you guys' channels out one more time, you can. Go ahead, Bosch. Yeah. Um, if you want um, uh, more arguments against this guy's desire to watch Tyrone cuck his 16-year-old white trad wife, et cetera, et cetera, you can head over to vosh.youtube.com.gov, um, where the uh, I got a you know, .gov address because the uh, I got a hookup with the Jews. And uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, full of fun. Uh, Martinez, go ahead. Yeah, you can find me at martinezperspective.net. We are totally anti-pedophile, unlike Vosh over here. Suspiciously advocate, specific denial. The advocate for child pornography and other perversions, evil perversions, and uh, we're pro-white over there. All I right, guess thanks. this has probably not been good for my reputation since I did spend the past two hours f***ing a baby brain. Um, it's been fun, though. Yeah, I appreciate you guys coming on tonight. Everybody have a great night. We'll talk to you later. And everybody out there in Crucible land, you have a great night, too. Uh, that was fun. All right. <laughs> Obviously, there was no there was no way to get to the bottom of any of the actual like talking points with that guy. Right. Because he was like that. You know, anytime you would get him on a point, he'd just be like, um, 
Okay, so like, you you you've agreed with a Jew on something, you know. Holy shit, Vermin! I hate you so much. It's insane how much I hate you. I just want you to know that I ha I despise you for this. This is like the third time. I swear to God. All right, well we can't we can't go long. We were gonna have a long fun stream on my return, but instead I have to do I I have to do errands. Uh, we can we can take a few more minutes. Uh, but yes. Yeah, yeah, everyone. Why didn't you call him not white? I mean, I said Martinez in a pretty suggestive fashion. Anyway, uh, post-debate wrap-up. Uh, obviously, that was a lot of fun. Um, that guy was, like, totally f***ing brain dead. Um, I, uh, like, there's no way to really get to the root of an argument or a point with somebody like that, because if you ever get him on a point... He'll like if he, he'll just say something like flagrantly wrong. Like for example, it was when he brought up that study on um, on unionization, which ended up showing like actually it's, it's actually like racial agitation, like from white people or stuff like that that tends to prevent um, unionization in um, in uh, 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 more racially diverse areas. Where he was just like, uh, huh, uh, okay, well, like that's actually more proof we should separate. It's kind of like it's like a feedback loop where he's scum of the earth and because he's scum of the earth like he's around other people who are also scum of the earth and he notices that that people who are scum of the earth tend to cause social problems and the social problems like he's like well you, we need to fix this by like giving us power so that other people don't react to us being scum of the earth you know um do you think he played football his brain was absolute mush i just wish i could have gotten more like the heart of any of these points but there wasn't like there, there was, there wasn't any thing to get at at the heart of it. You know what I mean? Um, look at this, please. What hey, is listen this? Listen to my rap, man. Listen to this shit. Go on, go ahead. Yo, yo, my name be Lashawn. I'm a hood rat from Chimp Cargo. I ain't never got no money, so I's got to borrow. But no bank will lend to me, they say I'm high risk. Then when I pull up on the block, racist cops do stop and frisk. Oh, okay, that's enough. Okay, I've said this before, and this remains like a really, really, really good litmus test, okay? If somebody claims to be predominantly pro-white or something, they're not. Because a person who's pro-white, like really, would be pro-white in the same way that pro-black people are pro-black. Talk to a person who advocates for black rights in America, like a black guy or whatever, and overwhelmingly they're going to be like, yeah, we have to like stand up to police racism. We need to address housing policy. We need to address economic inequality. It's about institutionally correcting issues that make their lives worse. But these guys don't give a shit about white people. They just hate non-white people. That's it. That's literally it. Um, that's, that's literally their, the only actual position that they have. Uh, all of their politics are oriented around this. This is, it's, it's, you can see this with trans people as well. It's like, you know how people will pretend to have principled beliefs on trans people? Like, oh, I'm not transphobic, but I just think it's harmful to them to blah, 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 you know? But then if you go look at the forums that they're in, they're like saying tranny this, tranny that, like 41%, kill yourself, whatever. Whenever bigotry is a, um, a component of the belief system set, by a person's ideology, it's reasonable to assume that they mean the most malicious version of the ideology that they hold. Does that make any sense? Does everyone understand what I'm trying to say here? Yeah, because historically, pro-black activists have been advocates for white people in their area. Fred Hampton, the Rainbow Coalition, working with like white Southerners to like try to build a coalition for making the world better, trying to like advocate for um, better housing policy and anti-capitalism uh, that would benefit, um, you know, uh, 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 like everyone affected, stuff like that. MLK as well. Yeah. Um, historically, the best advocates for like black people have been, uh, you know, working in line with and sympathetic to white people uh, who also have, you know, systemic issues that need redressing. If nothing else, Vosh made Andrew laugh so hard several times. Well, I, it just bothers me. Like, I guess maybe this is a product of the great deplatforming or whatever, but that guy was so fucking low IQ. He wasn't even witty or whatever.
I'm normally willing to have like a good faith back and forth or whatever. I mean, I'm always open to that from the beginning, but like it's like past a certain point, you're essentially it's an insult like to to the 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 very nature of online debate to approach a conversation while being that stupid. He felt really slow and sluggish when trying to come up with rebuttals. Yeah, it's um I insulted him a bunch of times too. Magic dirt theory far a dog whistle tries to mock the idea that a person's behavior comes their environment, not their genetics. I, I, I really like that as a far-right dog whistle because it really is like telling on how f***ing retarded they are, right? Like, you're, you, a sociologist, are like, um, yeah, well, the environment that a person's in can affect their outcomes as evidenced by all data ever and also common sense and everything. Like, all the universe points to this conclusion. And then a Nazi's like, so you think the dirt underneath their feet is magic? <laughs> Okay, you know, like that, that really like, I guess, um, I, I, that really like shows it up right there, doesn't it? I mean, that really indicates like the quality of discourse that we're, we're kind of locked into. I thought it was about golems. Um, oh, I don't, you know, whatever. I like how that guy was trying to like do the JQ thing. Um, and it ended up being like the heart cell, not heart cell, wait, the, um, wait, is it the heart seller act? Oh God, my brain. Um, the Immigration Act, 1965. Yeah, Heart Seller. Yeah, Heart Seller. Okay, just making sure I'm not mixing it up. Where he was like, the Jews did this, and at the end, his position was like, a Jewish group lobbied. <laughs> As the titanic power of the American Jew, truly is the might of the tribes of Israel felt in the American political system when they have the legal right to lobby just like every other person. <sighs> God. It's funny you had this day, uh, debate on Yom Kippur. Is it Yom Kippur? Didn't even realize. Okay, then. Um, ma yeah, Mazel Tov for all my Jewish brothers and sisters. Uh, I, do I, I do this for you. Dude opened with a bunch of quotes and studies, then was kicking himself when you did that because he couldn't just... Well, the problem is, first of all, he didn't really open with, like, studies, I think. But, like, he didn't argue... He never made an ethical argument! The closest thing he, thing he did to making an ethical argument was the idea that there would be fewer internal conflicts if everyone lived in an ethnostate. But then he said he's fine with other countries being ethnostates and he only just wants some countries to not be ethnostates. But then he said he wants every place to be for the people who were there ancestrally. But then he said he wants white people in South Africa. Just completely brain dead. No thoughts. No thoughts whatsoever. He said he was fine with Brazil being multicultural too. Well, he was lying when he said that. If he thinks that white people in South Africa should be able to form a separate ethnostate, then why would he not also believe that, like, the Castizos in Brazil could not form their own? Castizos, I'm using that, right? That's the descendants of white. Um, applied to the offspring of a union of a Spaniard and a Mestiza. Oh, no, then I would be thinking of the, um, the Spaniards. The, the, col the descendants of the colonizers. The, the, the white people in Brazil, you know? Um, if you can argue for a white ethnostate in parts of South Africa, then you would have to in parts of Brazil as well, if they wanted it. There's plenty of racial animus in Brazil. His Russia-Ukraine take was really weird. None of it was even coherent enough for me to argue with, really. Okay, hold on. I see someone in YouTube chat, because they always come over. I came into this open-minded, but Vosh would not allow a proper debate to develop. This will add to Trump's support. That sounds like a fucking, um template message you would get in like a Civ game or something. <laughs> I came here neutral, but I did not like your anti-racist arguments. You, 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 you will fear the plus one to right wing. Yeah. <laughs> Actual NPCs. God damn. Hey, YouTube chat. Mwah. Hello. I see you guys too. I look over. I see you guys. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's such a wonder to stream again. Oh, I love YouTube chat. I really do, you know. There are reasons you can't be on stream, but I look at you guys more often than you think. Vosh talks like a woman in the 1930s sometimes. I think sometimes it's very fun to be deliberately flamboyant in your speech in a way that's kind of like outside of the gay voice, because that's like the one flamboyant gay, like the flamboyant guy voice, right? It's like when you do the kind of like the gay affection, but I think you can do a lot of cool stuff. Even if you listen to, like, uh, radio broadcasters back during World War II, you know, like the, it's the turn of the night, then dun 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 You know, like, if you listen to how they talk sometimes, their intonations can be pretty, like, you know, flamboyant, which, I, I, it's nice, you know? It's, 